Matt. Hello and welcome to the Computer Game Show. My name is Sean Bell. I am joined by Matthew Murray. You're right. And James Farley. Hello. Uh, Dave is not here. He's poorly. Well, that's he's what he says. After the... <laughs> I think he is poorly. He's yeah. definitely... He finished a Balatro run. Was that his first? I think that was his first, wasn't it? Oh, it can't be that poorly then, can he? Well, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he says games. he's got a fever, but when I get a fever, I can't really play games. I get yeah, I don't think anyone can play games really if they have a fever. Yeah. So, alarm bells. Yeah, we should probably oh, email just... his employer. Yeah, he's a week off. <laughs> he's allowed a week. No, he knows he can just ask for a week off if he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he answered a week yeah. off a couple of weeks ago, and you two called in six. And they, <laughs> I was surprised. He was probably like, <laughs> we, we, "We should have done that. Fuck, we should have done that. We should have said." That's what I we're said. I wanted, to, I wanted to work it out so that it was him doing the show on his own. Yeah, we moved to Tuesday. <laughs> we moved to Wednesday. We moved to Thursday. <laughs> We are going to start the show the same way we always do, by thanking the full Nels crew. They are Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chap, Simon Nelson, Moomin Biscuit, Trans Right to Human Rights, Dave Ernsberger, Colin Brown, Gasman, Rocketman76, Dra- Grey Dragon Claw, Smooth Monkey, Richard Sawyer, John Tempelli, Jackie Sniper, Sam Higton, Tom S, Stan, Philip with an F, Fred Fenge, John the Nelsmeister Nelson, Ryan Cobain, Stephen the Nuke Littler, and happy birthday, Vituki. They all went to patreon.com forward slash TCGS. And they went full Nels, which is very, very kind of them. You don't have to go full Nels. There's other tiers, but you get other stuff. We did our uh, Patreon bonus show last week, which everyone's been really lovely about. A bit of a heavy one. Um, but it, I think it was it was good. Um, people seem to be yeah, responding to it really nicely. It's been really cool in the Discord and stuff. Um, and this week, this Wednesday, we're finally, after talking about it for two months, we're going to do the Sonic Adventure game book, Sonic versus Zonic, <laughs> which may... We, I mean, we need a backup plan because it might only take half an hour. I, th- I, I think that's generous, honestly. <laughs> I don't think it's going to take that long. Really? <laughs> But yeah, what, we're putting back up talks over then. I'm pretty sure you can die in it, right? You can, or you can fail and have to like start again. We're going to allow ourselves I mean, like no, no, save no, no. points, right? No, we need to have permadeath. Like, well, on, okay, it's, it's an Iron Man <laughs> mode. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we're doing that this Wednesday or today, if you're listening to this uh, when the show comes out um, at, I assume, 9 p.m. We don't we've sort of loosely talked about it, didn't we? Yeah, it'll, it'll be 9 anything. p.m. I'll, yeah. I'll put a Patreon post out. Um, to explain how you watch it live. But yeah, yep. £8.15 and above patrons can watch Sonic vs. Sonic Patreon. And yeah, it'll be live from this Wednesday at 9. Cool. Um, just to get a bit more about the bonus show, yeah, basically I'll, I'll tell the whole story about my wrist and other stuff that's been going on the last four wrist months, I guess. Life. But, uh, um, it is a big one. It is a big one. It's good, though. Um, right, feedback. What did the listeners think of last week's show, Matt? Oh, and just before we do that, hang on, just... <laughs> okay, let's get the party started now. <laughs> if you want to know what that is all about, I'm afraid you have to pay us money and listen to the bonus show. Yeah, um, it's a visual gag. Sorry, everyone listening to the podcast. But um, you really should be watching YouTube just to uh, <laughs> yeah, see yeah. what just happened there, <laughs> and then and then watch the and listen to the bonus show. Yeah. Um, feedback, yeah, Simon. Oh, Rich, Ooh, Rich. James has oh, a gun Rich. collection and he loves brawlers like Yakuza and Streets of Rage. He should consider taking out his frustrations on a punching bag at his local German gym. I too have pent up anger that made me miss work or mentally check out during office meetings. <laughs> but all of that changed when I joined an MMA gym. As Nike once wisely said, just do it, my fellow Bavarian, just do it. Uh, not, not Bavarian, because I, I mean, I, I live in I the think north you're, of Germany. You're an ad- adopted. Yeah, son of Bavaria, right? <laughs> but also, I mean, yeah, I can't see me doing MMA. I think that would be a bit of a disaster. I, I, I don't think you have to like necess- I don't think going to an MMA gym means you have to fight people. Do you not? I think uh, no. I think <laughs> why well, you, you you're disappointed by that? Yeah, a little no, bit. I think, <laughs> I think, you should I think do it's MMA just James. a gym where you prepare 
to potentially fight someone. I don't think, yeah, it's like, you know, right. We'll have okay. to spar, though. Do you reckon? Yeah. I, don't know what, I don't know what the rules are. It's it to shock you. I've never been to an MMA show. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but... you know, if I, but surely you'll do training and then you'll, you'll spar, you know, in Amazing. the octagon. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we have an MMA, there's an MMA gym where I live. Um, not in my house. I mean, in the town where I live. But it was right. It was next to like a soft play we used to go in a lot. Um, like and sometimes Isaac. you got confused and you start punching well, the hell out. Of... <laughs> no, you'd just be hanging out in the soft play, and then you just hear just people kicking the shit out of each other in the next room. It was really weird, just <laughs> properly smashing about and making grunts and stuff. I, I mean, I assume it was an MMA place. That could have been. Could have been anything, yeah. Could have been anything. Could have been a sex else? dungeon. I I wanted to find an <laughs> MMA club when um in the first few months after Elodie was born, and I was like had loads of pent up rage and anger. I was actually looking like wh where can I go to because I want to kill someone. But um, can I, where can I safely hit things? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or unsafely hit. But you know, in the end, <laughs> I just I took it out on the room, the game on iOS. Um, Barra Barry Ben. Barra Barry Ben, that's the one. Hi, lads. Last week when Sean talked about someone thinking they needed to watch Cheers in order to get into the Frasier, <laughs> I misheard and thought Sean said Asia. I was even more confused when David said, there's a lot of Cheers episodes, isn't there? Rather than why the fuck do you need to watch a sitcom from the 80s to enter Asia? Cheers, lads. Keep it up. I don't mind that. Normally, you know, normally when people try and do a joke that's literally just they misheard something and it's like, oh, well, that is, that's quite funny, but I didn't say that. I don't mind that. I think that's... I think I'm yeah, amused by the idea of having to watch all the shit. Like, there's a test on the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that oh, would be James is actually. off. He's had enough. James, managed. James is bored already. Five minutes. Oh, no, he's back. He's back. He's back. It's all right. Oh, he's, he's lost a layer. No, I just, that was too hot. Okay, <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> just do what baby okay uh raffi hi guys last week you were talking about what guests you could have on would you ever consider bringing a listener in perhaps listeners would need to submit video auctions uh, or sorry video auditions <laughs> and the two finalists have to duke it out at the next tcgs con also disappointed that no one mentioned sean lebode when you're rattling off all the great guests last week for shame i'm fairly sure we did mention sean yeah I'm we did fairly yeah, confident Dave, Dave we did, did. dave said like Sean and Sarah. And I know most of you listening would assume he was just saying nice things about me, but no, he never does that. Uh, he was actually talking about Sean the both. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a shame, Raffi. Um, <laughs> note, as I know, someone will verify to check whether Sean was mentioned and on the off chance I was mistaken, I prepared the following statement to be used in replacement of the above. Great show, guys. Second note, even if I was correct in you not mentioning Sean, the below is still factually correct. Great show, guys. Uh, one thing, Raffi, you could have just gone back and listened. Yeah, you could have checked yourself. Could have done that. Could Before writing mean, all that out. Could have done that. Have just... It wouldn't have, would have quicker than typing, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's this, a shame. This whole idea of bringing listeners in, I think this mm. is something we should agree to do now while David's not here, and knowing full well that he'll love the idea, and that also that they should be preparing musical stings as well that we can then <laughs> add in to parts of the podcast, because no. I know he loves that as well. Yeah. See, people don't like it when we add musical stings, though. When I when I did that uh, the buzz with James Farley one, I, like there was a few people like no that, that w was weirdly unsettling just because people listen to this knowing it's two hours plus of just talking without anything weird going on, and I, I sort of get that like if you're listening to a show that you know doesn't have any stings and you suddenly throw one in, I might weird. throw a sting in between everything this week and yeah. put a bed <laughs> beneath the music <laughs> but beneath us talking. Please do. It's <laughs> yeah. Who's next? Okay, big, U Dad, big UK Daz. Listening to you talk about Bellatro on the last few podcasts and enjoying the poker element of a deck building game, I wish to bring another poker based game to you called Aces and Adventures, which is a deck building RPG with poker based combat spread across 13 campaigns. I think it's currently only available on Steam for about £8 in the spring sale, and you can pick it up from EBA dot com for 50p i i can't verify that website so it's it's yeah gray as fuck okay well <laughs> just buy it for eight quid on in, on steam i reckon yeah. i think this one would definitely be a game that sean would love have you heard about it sean Aces i have heard Adventures? about it and i looked i looked it up it does look really good and i bet the developers are a little bit fed up about everyone going on about uh Bellatro. i'm not saying it even looks necessarily similar but yeah it's similar themes obviously um yeah it looks really good i will check it out are you interested, uh, James, in finding some more deck building RPGs with poker based combat mechanics spread across 13 campaigns? No. 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 
I thought Blapto would have changed your mind on a whole deck building rogue like no that we can't do not okay he uh, Simon to admit that he, it's like the the RPG or the turn based combat thing where he insisted he didn't like turn based combat and then we yeah he's been playing the last few Yakuza <laughs> I don't like turn based combat it's, but you do uh, in certain circumstances and that's fine yeah, but I I like it begrudgingly <laughs> 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 but that still means you like it yeah. Begrudgingly or not, whether it's begrudgingly or it's not, you'd like it. <laughs> let's let's move on. Yeah, yeah. Simon Warcraft, another great show last week, as always. Uh, though I couldn't help feeling sorry for Sean. For oh, no. years, Sean has had to put up with sighs and little giggles from James every time <laughs> Sean talks about another deck builder roguelike. <laughs> now, amazingly, James has finally found one he likes and credited Dave for recommending <laughs> it to him. James likes it so much, in fact, that he said he would like to stream it with Dave in the biggest <laughs> fuck you to Sean. Don't let the bastards get you down, Sean. Thank you, Simon. Um, no, I I, I, mean, I don't know why I'm defending James. I think James's <laughs> point was that, well, like, I, I'm never going to sell a roguelike deck builder to James because he knows I really like most of them and he likes none of them, or so he thinks. I think if he played more of them, he'd probably change his mind. I'll tell you what, but I, I nearly bought Inscription today again. Did you? Because I've got it on PlayStation, but then oh, I nearly right, bought yeah. it on Switch because it was eight quid. And I thought, because of going away, I thought you absolutely I should. It you absolutely yeah, should. Three yeah. quid. Yeah, 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 totally. But yeah, by understanding this instance, like a recommend a recommendation of this sort of game from Dave means more than one from me. The whole thing, you know, the, I mean, the whole thing with Dave, you know, having like having to sort of confirm all my recommendations with John Denton. It's starting to sting a little bit. I was going to say, yeah, uh, <laughs> in the order, James, like, you know, most valuable, least valuable, Sean, David, <laughs> Sean, Denton, or David. I mean, what's, what's the order? Depends John on Denton, the game, obviously, Sean. is number one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then David, regardless, and then Sean's at the bottom. Yeah. And I'm, I'm below. I'm but below I, but I am on the list. That's you are, the, yeah. I'm not even on the list, Sean. People, Eight billion people on this planet. A lot of them are not on that list. Yeah, I'm number true. three. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Bronze. Well, if I was on the list, like James, where would I be if I was on the list? Uh, you'd have to play some games to be on the list, Matt. <laughs> got you there. Oh, right. yeah, you have got me there, yeah. You have, you, you, you prick. Uh, Ryan Cobain, <laughs> dear TCGS Co., just a quick thing while it's in my head. Dave's comments regarding Helldivers 2 getting an 8 from Edge being too low. I thought it was pretty well established at this point that, uh, that an 8 from Edge is basically 9 anywhere and everywhere else. And last year was a war to Jedi Survivors and Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. That and the 2020 initial release managed to get all the way to the final four to got his show and could have won it, but it was a 2020 game. This bodes well for Helldivers 2 as p probably a top four gothic contender, and if not, it's still not a 2020 release masquerading as a modern game. Anyway, cheers for all the content pods and stuff you guys do. Much love, Ryan Cobain. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I know. Just obviously, we just really like Helldivers 2, and we think it deserves perfect scores. Actually, everywhere. when I see a game from Edge getting an 8, I think, mm. okay, fine, but if it gets a 7, I'm even more interested, actually. Yeah, the Edge 7's the, mm -hmm. the one, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> mm, what, what is this game? And <laughs> Edge 7, you have me intrigued. <laughs> I keep. I need to get the current issue of Edge because it's got um, Citizen Sleeper Two on it. It does, yeah, on yeah. My, my my subscriber copy came through and it looks it's a gorgeous copy. Oh, I see. Yeah, gorgeous you cover. A bit in that you're a subs you're a real fan. Yeah, I just pick and chip. Well, I felt really bad because I was I was a subscriber for a while and then just I don't know, just some months I just would not get around to reading it and then just I don't know, I just end up with this pile of magazines and it's like I'll probably yeah I'll yeah that happens again. to me too, Sean, but. Like, you can get subscriptions online, which is so cheap. It's like, well... That's true. What is See, it like? I've got this problem where I've got a digital subscription. But it's not a digital subscription because it's like I get it through like one of the news apps that I use, right? Mm. But I can't read it because it's like... It's really annoying because I'm doing it on like Apple News and you can't... Like, it's really difficult to like change the font size and everything. Of really? stuff. You can't, so it's you can't like, just zoom in? No, you can zoom in. Mm. But what I really hate is the way that you can't like you can't flip your phone into like landscape mode to read it. Right. And what's annoying about that is the edges like um, column widths are just the wrong size. <laughs> but if you're, you're reading listening to on this a shilling, phone. sort really? out your column width, yeah. you prick. <laughs> You it's thought they would have fixed good. that for, for phones. I mean, I, I know I got a message like last month saying, actually, now you get a digital subscription with your Edge subscription, so maybe okay. you can view it somewhere else, James. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's... it's such a shame because you remember they, they sort of pioneered the 
the digital version being like actually interactive and cool. Yeah, like, that was really cool in the beginning. Yeah. And you could like, you know, tap on the screenshots and it'd be a little video and stuff. That stuff was amazing. And then I believe it was Future's decision to stop doing that, which I think was very short sighted. Yeah, I, I really like that, especially because, mm. you know, like, especially they, they used to like have loads of previews for stuff that I had no idea what this is. And just being yeah. able to click a link to see a preview video of it. Yeah. And then yeah, you yeah. get like a better, yeah, better mm. idea. It was great, yeah. but yeah. no longer there. No, it's good to YouTube for the same. Same yeah. thing. Could do that, yeah. Could do that, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gein, can we please have can we please have James's nineties dream as a mug? I would love to have James on my desk at all times. Well, Gein, um yeah. <laughs> before this pod, I was like, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, right? I am going to create the mug and put it on our store, and when I read this message, I'm gonna say it's available now, everyone. But um uh, I, I put the two designs on it. You want two designs because if you're left-handed, you want to see it. If you're right-handed, you want to see it. Otherwise, what you'd see like a, a white mug, rubbish. And with two designs um, and us making, I think, 49 pence per mug profit, the mug would have cost £19. Now, we can't set those prices. <laughs> That's just the price the shirt have it. 19 quid. Um, I think the postage is rubbish anyway on Spreadshirt. Mm -hmm. um, although I think maybe today there's an offer where it's free postage. Anyway, we should, we, probably, thought, we, should, we should, you know, big that up. Oh, oh no, actually, if, if you only if you're listening to live, if you listen to us on Wednesday, <laughs> the offer's probably finished. But I was like, no one's going to pay nine, and they shouldn't pay 19 pounds for a mug. So, mm. um, yeah, we, we, we tried, but it's not going to be available because for, like, for, the... for two James's face, it's just ridiculous expensive. Yeah, like the the t-shirts are on the pricier end, but I think they are genuinely nice t-shirts, like the ones I've bought from us because uh, we have to buy them ourselves. Yeah, well, again, um, we upgraded to the premium t-shirt, yeah. which is better than just the cheap things we were having yeah, a few yeah, years yeah. ago. So, but... like, so they are really nice. So it's although it's I would like it to be less, but still an amount I'm comfortable charging for a t-shirt, even though we don't see much of it. But yeah, I can't ask people to spend twenty quid on a fucking mug. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. The hoodies also, yeah, are amazing. I need to get another one. Actually, I love my, I love my my hoodies I've had before. But no, I yeah, um, I need a bigger one. It's unfortunate that we will not be selling mugs because they're twenty pounds <laughs> plus postage, which is too much for a mug, baby. So you have to, yeah. you just have to imagine James on your desk. Maybe what about, maybe, ma what about yeah. mouse mats? Could, could we get a mouse mat? You can get them. You can get all sorts of things. But <laughs> I mean. We need to go. We also build need need to be a time machine to go back to a time where people use mouse maps, and we can't also <laughs> build true. that. What about one of those? You know the 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 sort of desk mats that people use, where it like rolls out over the entire desk, and the keyboard and the mouse goes on it. Now that would be good. Maybe I don't, get I James... don't understand why they're a thing when mouse mats aren't. What's the because it, I mean, I've got one right in front of me right now. Um, okay. <laughs> it's just nice, isn't it? Like well, you put I mean, the other bits I just, on it. I'm just curious. Yeah, it is a basic giant mouse mat because yeah. the little one, the little square ones are just horrible, aren't they? So I'm, I'm using a mouse mat. You actually? Mm. Yeah, because otherwise it makes horrendous noise. Hold like it moving. up on the camera. I want to see it. Right. Yeah, prove it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, podcast listeners. There you go. Nope, there it is. Oh yeah, there so you are. It is yeah, now, now turn it over. Let's see. Let's see what the design is. You pervert. <laughs> <laughs> we know what's on the other side of that mouse mat. You sicko. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, maybe we can have some more James merch, but stuff that isn't going to cost the earth, basically. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what I was thinking, yeah. actually, what we can maybe develop is some AR kind of James Farley for the desk. No, maybe like a that. filter where you look and you look for your phone and a little James dancing. <laughs> yeah? We, we just need some footage of you dancing against a plain background, James. Would be fine. Yeah. Nah. A green screen, even. You can have mine now. Um, That's true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. That is it for feedback. Go to tcgs.co slash dear tcgs to leave your feedback. James, I have I've not just realised people will be like, oh, is Sean going to do one of those funny... No, I'm not. What's the Come news, on, James? Sean, who's we waiting for that? Well, it's been years since you last did one of those. The only, the only news story I can think of is... Kate Middleton, and that's not had a fun end, so I can't... No, that, that's, a... that's been ruined now, isn't it? Yeah, and... well... Sad, sad for her, sad for the so family. He's been but... ruined is a bit harsh. <laughs> Sorry, you know uh, what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> James, what's the news, mate? Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, we had some news which dropped, well, that Matt dropped in my lap um, just before the... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what's an image? Sorry, go on. The show, um, which was, it's Chris Dring uh, from Games Industry Biz who's been at GDC. And... Makes it sound like this is the story's about him. It's, well, it's not said... about him, but he is the main person. Well done, we're... Chris. You went to GDC. Well yeah, done, yeah. mate. 
Good He's man. the main person that we're quoting here. Okay. This is from like VGC. They ran the story, which is publishers are reportedly questioning support for Xbox amid flatlining sales. And mm. this was after Chris Ring, you know, spoke to them about. Or I'm not sure he spoke to them. I haven't read the story properly, um, but he. <laughs> He has basically like, got a whole bunch of Is this because you knew Dave wasn't in tonight? And yeah. he's like, oh, I'll just I'll fucking win No, it's because I literally saw the story two <laughs> minutes before we started recording. Yeah, no, so I had to very quickly copy and paste bits. Uh, but anyway, so one of the main takeaways from GDC was that Xbox is in real trouble as a hardware manufacturer, according to Chris Drink. Uh, he, said, he said, the other thing I heard, I heard it from a very prominent company, and one not so prominent was that Xbox's performance in Europe is just flatlining. You can follow our monthly coverage in the games market and you can see that Xbox sales are falling and it's been falling all throughout last year and it's falling even harder this year. The phrase that one major company who released a big game last year said was, I don't know why we bothered supporting it. Uh, we mentioned on a previous podcast, so this is him talking about the gamesindustry.biz podcast, uh, we'd heard retailers in Europe are considering or had already been cutting back their Xbox stock on their shelves, hardware games, that kind of thing, and now you've got third-party publishers going, we're putting in a lot of effort trying to create a Series S version and an X version of a game, when, to be honest with you, for us, the market is PC and PS5. Uh, and then he says, and with Xbox putting some of the games on PS4, uh, sorry, PS5, and from what I understand, the majority of them will be coming across at some point, assuming it progresses as Xbox leads, it probably will. I think Xbox is in real trouble as a hardware manufacturer, and that was the thing that came out of GDC for me. Uh, so, yeah, so that was um, yeah, Chris Dring talking about... It's been about... interesting because I've seen like a couple of... I mean, this is like the indie end of things, but where people are doing physical versions of, of games that have already been available digitally um there's been a few the one i can remember off the top of my head was talos principle 2 so that's devolver um they're doing a physical ps5 version but not an xbox one and there's a f there's, i've seen a few where i've been like oh i would have bought the xbox one but i guess not much of a market for it and then and obviously that you know looking at that that sort of chimed in with the stuff we'd heard about like xbox sort of withdrawing from physical um media mm -hmm. despite claims otherwise um but then now hearing this, it's like, oh, are people just not buying anything on the Xbox? But then, I mean, that the thing is, like with Game Pass and everything, mm. I think has that not encouraged people not to buy stuff because they're mm. just thinking it will come to Game Pass at some point or whatever yeah. and not buying stuff anymore. Yeah, like I know they've, they've talked about the fact that, you know, early Game Pass stuff would actually sell more as a result of having been on Game Pass and that was... So it was seen as this sort of universally positive thing, but yeah, we now at the point where that's worn off. Because mm. like you used to see this with like when the Steam, the daft like Steam sales first started, and Valve were like, yeah, we can sell you know Team Fortress Two for three pounds or whatever, um, because not only do we actually make more money than like because so many people pick it up because why not? It's three quid. But then actually, even once it goes back to full price, there are more people buying it. Like there's a there's a longer tail on it than you would expect. But I think all that's out the window now. Like whenever there's a Steam sale, you know, it used to be like, "Oh my God, I'm going to buy loads of games for two, three quid each," and I just that's just not a thing anymore, and hasn't been for years. So again, I think the the shine sort of came off that, and people got wise to it, and it was too much. Yeah, just people waiting for these like massive discounts. And I wonder, yeah, I wonder if the same thing has happened with Game Pass now, mm. where everyone's just like, "Well, I'll just wait for it." It's really difficult to sort of see where this is going to go because I I can't see a world where they stop making xboxes like, i just can't see mm -hmm. that happening mm -hmm. it seems very strange for that for them to go because mostly because of game pass because as mm. we know at the moment the only platforms you can get that on are xbox and pc yeah mm -hmm. this is the the only places you can get this and that's largely because other companies will not allow it on their on their machines mm. because you know because of the competitive element yeah so if they really want to push game pass they can't stop mm. xbox can they because they can't surely just rely on like pc game pass instead Mm. Unless they just bin it at some point and just say, "Okay, we're just going to sell sell games instead." Um, mm. Possibly, I mean, but like, you know, consoles have generally been loss leaders, and it's the software and accessories that make the money. But then, mm. if they're not even selling a lot of the software, like you got to think, what is the point? You mm. know, it's, it's sad because I don't really see any of. I don't see as really, as you say, like changing or improving. Really, I mean, I, I don't know what sales are like for these consoles, and I'm sure they're still fine enough, but. It doesn't take much for like 
you know the tide to to change and if a few people are doing think about now these articles will probably make other people thinking hey well maybe we shouldn't bother either and then mm. you know it'll just it'll just get bigger and bigger and before you know it like yeah i guess it's not a surprise in many ways you know they've been de-emphasizing the hardware because they're like, we want to get xbox you know game cards game pass everywhere it's a service they want to put on mm. other places they you know putting the PC games on putting the games on PC. It's kind of no surprise in a way, and they must have seen what the end goal end goal was. And mm. yeah, the but end they goal can't... was always de-emphasizing hardware sales. And I think they've said it in their statements. They probably would be saying it in their statements to try and get around the fact that sales obviously aren't as good as PS Five. But but that that end game doesn't work like unless they can get Game Pass on everything. Like no, it doesn't. No, it, it really doesn't. I don't see where they go with that. I mean, I could I can see that if. If these games do very well on PlayStation, you know, the ones that they've, um, you know, like Sea of Thieves and mm. Hi-Fi Rush and stuff like that, surely within Microsoft as well, people are going to be like, yeah, we should be doing more of this. Yep. There should be, we could be <laughs> making a lot more money, you know, from this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, think about, you know, the forthcoming, I mean, not Starfield, obviously, we know what that's like, but, you know, the, 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 next, uh, the next Elder Scrolls game, let's assume it's amazing. Um, you know, it, they'll be mad not to have that on play PS5. Think of all the the, the revenue they, they'll make. If they keep it just on Xbox and Game Pass, yeah, it's like a potential way for, to sell hardware, but... Uh, it's like, there's, I don't think there's any think other Think of all the money they're turning down by not having it on the other consoles. Yeah, like, I don't think there's any other industry where it'd be acceptable to be like, oh yeah, we're going to invest billions in this stuff and then we're going to sell it only to the smallest market mm. available <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, that's just insane isn't it i understand there's you know there's, there's a longer game there and there's there's you know they're wanting to get people on board with the microsoft ecosystem so then they get the, the cut of everything mm. going forward but it's just yeah you wonder if the the investment is now just so great that it's just it, you know obviously they it. signed a lot of these 10-year deals to yeah. get the uh acquisition over the line mm -hmm. uh, i wonder where xbox will be in 10 years mm. Because all like yeah, it's it, it can't be Xbox exclusive. But after ten years, potentially, well, there might not even be an Xbox around in ten years, <laughs> like a console around have, in ten years. Have we heard anything about the Switch version of Call of Duty? Because I kept going on about that. Um, yeah, they assured us that's that's happening, didn't they? Yeah, but been, it would just be a mobile. Sure, it would be a mobile mobile port, wouldn't it? No, mobile claimed, port. They, they swore it wasn't going to be that. They said it, <laughs> it, it won't be just. But a even then, port. it'd have to be a cloud version, surely. Mm -hmm. And also, having said that, like uh, I think there was an update they mentioned last week or the week before uh, to like the um, I was a Call of Duty Mobile, whatever it's called. Sorry, I don't mm. play it. But like they mentioned about that, there's like a, a a really big update on patch for like the latest like iPhone 15 Pros, and it brings it almost up to like console quality in terms of graphics. Oh, like wow. so, even that version wouldn't <laughs> probably wouldn't run on a Switch, <laughs> given <laughs> Apple's kind of you know uh, GPU not like, in 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 the end chips. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's, like, uh, I mean, it's completely anecdotal. I haven't touched any Game Pass stuff in ages, and it, and that's not even you know, and that's not me going. Oh, hasn't Game Pass been shit? It hasn't. There's been stuff that's come on it that I, I do actually want to play, but I think it's just been such a good time for games that I've had to actually buy with money. Yeah, um, that's going to change this week, <laughs> though. I think maybe do you with reckon? with Open Roads, which is the oh, full, yeah, 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 the Fulbright yeah. yep. company game. Yep. Excited. Uh, that's out on the twenty eighth. So, um, but there was the one. Oh God, what's it called? Is it Light Lightyear Frontier? The oh yeah, farming yeah. with Max. Yes, is it out um, already? Is it? That is out. That's on. Yeah, that's on. That's on Game Pass. So well, that's got you written all over it, surely. Yeah, exactly. Um, we should uh, we should stream that. That might be a funny co-op stream. If it's four or, player, hell yeah, or a really boring one. Who knows? It is, we'll yeah, have it have it ready something. after Sonic versus Sonic. Um, that might that might be Plan B. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> open roads. Um, obviously, you know, it's like an indie interactive kind of you know mm. game um i'm hoping it'll be good hoping it'll be mm. good yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's game crossed. passed but this i mean at the moment with this like going back to this story it feels it's, it feels a little bit like with the gamecube like do you remember how that was like towards the sort of the mm. tail end of it and it was just like third parties started being like nah we're just ps2 and xbox you know the original xbox we're going to develop for now we're not bothering with with that mm. anymore it mm. just feels a bit strange that it's it's going along that mm -hmm. sort of route like the Series S makes sense, and you know, no doubt they've done well, and no doubt the ratio of S versus X is probably far in the S's favour, um, and that's good because it's cheaper, but also it's a much lower baseline, and devs have to accommodate both the X and and the S. Mm -hmm. And we've heard kind of 
anecdotal complaints and issues, and that's why I say Baldur's Gate, they have co-op, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then you have things like the Switch, where devs are happy to have happy to work for to a different kind of standard. But then I guess the Switch is so Worth different. It. It's worth it. One, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've got 100 million people. Like, yeah. yeah, and also it's it's so different. It's not like yeah, exactly the same game, you know, but downgraded slightly or, yeah. or maybe more substantially. It's like we will make a different version for that console because it's worth it because of the sales numbers. Whereas this is kind of caught between lower a lower fidelity, but also without the huge sales numbers behind it. So it's like mm. it's kind of worst of both worlds, really. I genuinely thought, given especially the the current economic climate. Like I would have thought the Series S would have been an absolute slam dunk, and it's still very strange to me that Sony have seemingly won by still having the more premium option, given that everyone is skint. It's wild. But they had games out. Lots they had more games, first so party like, games. Yeah. <laughs> and I still, I still would stand by the fact that a lot of people, like I, I seriously think a lot of people just don't care about uh, things like Game Pass. Like they really don't, mm. and they're quite happy to pick up a console and play. You know. Yeah, sports fc or whatever you know mm-hmm. and that's it really for the whole year mm. and uh, that's why it's easier to go with something you already know rather than yeah, yeah even though the series s is cheaper mm-hmm. and so many people moved over from 360 to you know to ps4 when that blew up so mm. yeah i don't know what's the next story james so GTA 6's release might slip to 2026 uh, because apparently development has fallen behind. So this is an anonymous source that was talking to Kotaku uh, mm. who said that it had fallen behind and they said this is apparently why the management also asked everybody to return to the office full time because they think the game is is slipping uh, right. to later. So yeah, that's a shame. It is. I mean, not, not surprising, is it? No. Like, Also, Rockstar can afford to delay... These I was going to say, yeah, for like... a game that's going to probably be the biggest release possibly of all time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they're rather delayed, and it was brilliant. Then, like, rush it out, and it's like, oh, hang on, maybe this isn't what we wanted it to be. Like, they will delay as long as it needs to be to for it to live up to the hype. Frankly, mm-hmm. yeah, I just hope. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't believe this will be the case, but I would just hope that if it is being delayed, that's so they're not, you know, putting too much pressure on the staff for a longer period mm. of time. But I imagine they probably are already um mm-hmm. but who knows i mean working on a highly anticipated game is giving mad pressure anyway but yeah yeah, yeah. um we're also with the f- kind of return to office uh, you know stuff mm. who, who knows hopefully evan's okay over there but mm. yeah the actual the actual news of it potentially missing the 25 25 release window yeah it's not not a surprise is it really not a surprise at all no um That's and i think not... i think it'll be worth the wait oh, no matter what 100%, yeah um, definitely but yeah hey, um, it must be a bit annoying for Sony, though, isn't it, with the PS5 Pro? But they maybe were thinking that was going to drive sales for that. That's true. You yeah, know, if that all but... doesn't all synchronise, that'll be annoying for Sony. Yeah. Uh, boohoo, Sony. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you think it'll be all right? I think they'll be. I think they'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're making a whip round. I think they'll probably be all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll chuck in the antenna. Keep we'll just keep Sony going. That's good, actually. Because if this is delayed, that might make me delay my purchase of a PS5 Pro. So no this worries, is all yeah. good. <laughs> it won't. It won't. I'll be there day one. <laughs> Okay, um, has, has, have any of you seen this Captain America and Black Panther game trailer? I haven't, I have. I've, heard, I've heard great things. Oh, you haven't watched though. it, Sean? Oh, no, man. I haven't, sorry. Just watch it now on me, second by second. It's quite impressive. Yeah. Like, you look at it and you think, I mean, for a few, for a couple of seconds, like, you are sort of like, this is film footage, you mm-hmm. know, of people when it, it's mm-hmm. not, because it's all, like, you know, computer generated, but it's very <laughs> impressive. I mean, it's, it's, it sets, like, so this is, um, uh, what? Oh, the, 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 this is that set during. Sorry, I'm, I don't know what is wrong with me this evening. I can't Dave's not fall, here. It's fine. You can relax. I can't for words, and I feel weird because <laughs> David's not here. Um, <laughs> what well, do, do you need to shout at you, James? Yeah, is that can, what you you, need? can you just start being aggressive, please? You the problem is prick. when, when bits like this happen, it, you twat, you twat, <laughs> twat. When bits like this happen. This is when we start getting feedback from people going, "Bloody hell, bring Dave back." Go oh, get this lot in order. Fuck yeah. in hell. <laughs> This is rubbish. Dave, James can't even speak. <laughs> oh, I can't speak. Bloody useless. Look, can, you, can some of you just ask me questions that there's no way that I could have the answers for, like right now? <laughs> okay. Well, what year is this game set? Uh, 2025. Uh, <laughs> I can't <laughs> speak. Anyway, yeah. What's this game, James? Uh, yeah. So this is it's Marvel. It's 1943. Uh, this is set, and so this is uh, young you Steve set... Rogers. Uh, all right, go on. What? <laughs> 
What? You just said it was set in 2024. So that, that was that was a joke. Uh, right. Yeah, it just didn't. Yeah, land. You really gotta, you gotta get on it. Sean, he's, that was a gag. Uh, yeah, it didn't land. No, no, no. Um, so yeah, so this is this is with a young Steve Rogers, uh, you know, as Captain America, obviously, mm -hmm. and then also Azuri, which is T'Challa's grandfather. Um, okay. For World War Two era Black Panther, and uh, yeah, it's it it's not entirely clear what this game is yet but it is set in occupied paris and it's coming out in 2025 and, and crucially uh, amy hennig's working on it yes exactly, exactly. Yeah. so yeah. we probably safe to assume a narrative heavy adventure game which is not to pigeonhole her just that's what she's really fucking good at so mm -hmm. I'm more than happy if that's what that's what it is yeah um yeah i thought this trailer looked brilliant it is, it is just a cgi trailer but yeah it uses epics metahuman stuff and, and, it, and it looks it does look amazing i mean i know like a lot of the marvel movies mm. you know do you use cgi so maybe it's not like a massive like is that not, is that, are they not documentaries are they not? no it turns out <laughs> uh, computers are actually using the making not, of the movies not, of it's it's not all oh my God. like live effects they i use did wonder sometimes. how they filmed it yeah <laughs> well, now you know you know now you know um so but yeah i've witnessed even as this cgi trade looked it got me really, really excited. And mm -hmm. the fact Amy Henning is using is on there as well. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, often it's like, oh, I'm, a Marvel game. It's not really too inspiring, apart from the say Spider-Man games. And I'm sure Wolverine will be good because of the people mm -hmm. making it. But mm -hmm. this one's like, oh, come okay. On, this this not been that. I mean, come on, there was, uh, what's it called? The Guardians of the Galaxy one. That was a brilliant. That, that was, was a really, really, good. really good one. There's only been one Marvel and game still... that hasn't been great. <laughs> Which I is the Avengers, yeah. Time, yeah. The Avengers game was okay. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> shit. <laughs> it was perfectly serviceable. It was a six yeah. out of ten. It yeah, was yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with it. It yeah. was a six out of ten, but obviously everyone expected a nine because it yeah. was the the Marvel game. But it mm -hmm. just yeah. Hang on. But yeah, after this trailer looked really really good. Uh, it got me really pumped, even if we don't really know too much about the game itself. But yeah, excited for this now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, next story is that Resident Evil Nine could be an open world game. Um, so this is following on from Dragon's Dogma 2, um, which obviously has like expanded the capabilities of the RE engine and mm. also along with Monster Hunter World as well. Mm. And so it looks like it's going to be Resident Evil could be going open world, which I can kind of see. I can see how that would maybe work if it's like if it's across a city or something like that. I think that could be quite exciting and quite interesting. But um, I mean, the, the last one, uh, yeah, Village had sort of elements that were yeah. starting to get towards open world, but not not quite. Yeah, because it kind of had, had that hub, didn't it? And then you walked mm -hmm. to the various kind of mon different themed monster areas, didn't you? So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can totally see how it would work. I mean, not not on the size of a, a Metal Gear Solid Five, but I think mm -hmm. it could, yeah, it could totally work in a city. I think it's open world, there's a check, checkpoint, checklist, and I don't know. I haven't said see that I'm playing I'm, I'm enjoying exactly that in final fantasy 7 rebirth so i can't complain too much but i'm like mm -hmm. i don't know do i want my resi games to go that in that direction but i can see how it would work mm. yeah, totally. i mean i i i really hope they don't do like sort of resident evil village style open world as in i don't want another countryside to explore with this mm. i feel i feel that's that feels really played out to me at this stage of resident evil like since resident evil 4 there's been this sort of obsession of keep going back to that sort of style and it'd be nice to go to a city again i think would be would be pretty cool do you think you'll be dynamically slash relentlessly pursued by like a main villain who's just kind of around i hope so not. part of it being open world is i don't know would it work if you're sort of monitoring what they're doing and trying to avoid them or is it just they can fucking smash in the like the, the wall next to you at any point you mean like nemesis and, but yeah. just there always. yeah yeah basically yeah, yeah. Or if it's um if it's open world, it's less about like an enemy, but maybe like uh, basically uh not like big things happening to the area you're in. So rather than one enemy, it could be you know like like weather type things, but then maybe that's part of the virus or whether almost like mini uh public events you'll get in Destiny where it'll be like no get out of that zone or this and never mm. because this thing's happening to a certain block of streets or buildings. So yeah, if you if you did it in the city, you had the sheer volume of people could result in things like you know buildings collapsing and stuff like that. It could be yeah, it could yeah. be fascinating something like that. You know. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, this, where's I'm, this I, come from? I, sorry, I like James. It's just guesswork based on what they've yeah. been doing with the engine basically or is it it, it seems to be guesswork yeah i don't yeah, think it's yeah. it's not been confirmed that this is where it's going but mm. that seems to be yeah the, the idea yeah. fair dues mm. okay um, go on sorry i was gonna i was gonna move on to the next no no, no that's final fine. Go, go. 
Okay, so the final story is Capcom has responded to criticism of Dragon's Dogma 2's uh, paid DLC and performance issues. So, according to the story, this is a yeah. co- just wait, Sean. Okay, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, let yeah, me just right, read right. what it says. So, <laughs> according to VGC, it says the game currently has a mixed reception on Steam. Uh, just over forty percent of reviews are positive, and there's also been some unhappiness it seems about the DLC because apparently there are twenty-one different items that you can buy. These are available for free within the game, but you can also buy them as DLC. But then people are saying it's quite tough to get a lot of these, and the accusation is then that it's been designed this way to then sell more DLC because people will just get frustrated and have a go. So, wait a minute, Sean. Just wait a minute. So, this is from no, Polygon. No, you've already given it more context than some of the reports I've seen. So, yeah, go on. So, this is from Polygon. They said, yeah. Wake Stones, for example, allow you to revive your character in the middle of combat and are rare enough that players are advised to save them for use during only the most challenging encounters. But now, the temptation is there to just buy your way out of trouble for 99 cents. So, this is one of the accusations. But then also, mm. uh, performance on PC hasn't been great, and Capcom are looking into that still. So, go ahead, Sean. Shall I? Shall we seamlessly segue into what we've been playing? Yeah. Oh, you're going to ignore this, are you? You're going to ignore this, are you? You're going to ignore the big news just because you're no, at the right. game. We don't I have think... to just not segue anyway. No, we're staying right on this story. Okay, no, no, Sean. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this stuff. I, I genuinely think some of the reporting around this stuff has been weird, right? Like to the borderline dishonest in some cases. Like hi, the way some websites, naming no names, have like highlighted it's like, oh, like. Character customization items are paid DLC, and it's like fucking just the stuff you can buy, as James says, is all free in the game. Like, you are supposed to earn it, and it's not like in no way is it like a slog. Like, yes, it's you know, so it's items that help you fast travel, and you know, and there's people who are saying, like, well, I thought the game didn't have fast travel in it. Like, it does, but it's really limited, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, but like. This DLC wasn't available until the game went like actually on sale, right? So all the reviews that came out of this game, everyone's like giving it really high scores. They couldn't have even bought the DLC if they wanted to. So and then like and and people are like, oh, why did none of the reviews mention this? Now there's been some people who reviewed the game claiming they didn't know, um, and saying, oh, it was it was in the review guide, but I, I didn't want to read it because I thought it might have spoilers in it. It wasn't in the review guide. It was in a separate document. And I know because called I got... expensive DLC. Ignore that. Ignore that. Um, ignore was... that. <laughs> Our plan for dollars. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How are we going to rinse the customer? <laughs> dot JPEG. Like, How I'll, to I'll, turn I'll... players into payers? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yeah, to me, uh, you know, as someone who's lucky enough to get a, you know, full disclosure, like got an early copy of the game to be able to play it for review and stuff. Um, like I thought it was crystal clear what the DLC was going to be. And to me, I mean, you know, for the, for the time I spent with the game, I was just like, if anything, the DLC to me feels a bit scummy just because it's not that helpful, really. Like it's not, I don't know, it's, not, it's nothing that particularly worth spending real money on, I would say. Um, the way that that Polycon, Polycon? Polygon, 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 Polygon quote frames it is also a bit, dishonest because it's saying like it's suggesting that it's like oh you've died do you want to pay a quid to come but that's not you, you don't it... you don't get a pop-up sean that says no. do you want to pay money <laughs> no to... you don't it's just if you've got wake stones it's like do you want to use one of them yes it looks no. like you're trying to play <laughs> would you like to pay <laughs> it's like you're rubbish at the game do you want to pay yeah. money? um i just and like the di- like the paid dlc isn't like in the game right you have to go to the store like outside of the game as far as I, i've never seen it right it's not it's never like I don't know. It's never bothered me. Um, well, hang on, hang on. What, what, what's, what's that? You're saying that's fine because it's not actually in the game. I'm not saying it's fine. I'm just saying like th- this notion that it's like like forced upon you or encourages you to spend money on this stuff is to me is just absolutely insane. Is that it's, is that just because you're too good, Sean, to actually well, have to I'm use any of these items? Elite. Uh, yeah. Um, at video games. No, it's uh, no. Like, I've, I've, there's been times I've, I've struggled with the game, and that's just part of it. Like. It just yeah, it's just been so strange the way people have been writing about this. And look at the horrible negative attention it's it's garnered. It's really really strange. Um, mm. I mean, I do wonder like because there's you know there's part of me like you know I said this when like Exo Primal came out in that I was like I I can't believe this game exists for me 
because it feels like it's the exact sort of thing I like. It's clearly had a lot of money spent on it. And if this, if slightly murky microtransactions are like part of, you know, how you justify a game like that getting made, then I'll kind of, I'll kind of accept it. But I do wonder if it's now to the point that like the negative attention isn't worth it. Do you know what I mean? Um, it so who knows? Like it. But I mean, for God's sake, like if because I've you know I've been getting messages from people. Oh, like I heard you saying Dragon's Dogma Two is really good, but I've heard this stuff about the paid DLC. It's like fucking ignore it. You can just don't ever have to know it exists. You Can't believe you're playing DLC Dogma. You, <laughs> you prick. You <laughs> prick. <laughs> it, yeah, been really strange. Would you like me to talk about the rest of the game now? Yes, yes. please. You may genuinely want to set a timer because. I'm just going to keep I'll going. I'll do that. Hang on. I, have... <laughs> I mean, I've also been playing Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to start, Matt? <laughs> no, I'm good, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm 15 minutes into the game. Uh... So, I was a massive fan of the first Dragon's Dogma. Bit of context. I know we talked about it a bit last week, but, you know, so Dragon's Dogma was a game that came out and didn't do amazingly well to begin with, but over the last 10, was it 12 years since it came out, it's it's eventually sold millions of copies and was sort of regarded as a bit of a cult hit, um, which, you know, even though it sold millions, it took ages to do it and sort of word of mouth sort of grew and grew and people found that, like, it's a, it was quite an awkward game, but it's a very interesting one and I think it makes up, you know, more than makes up for its awkwardness. Um, and, like, the, the thing that was interesting about the first game was, A, so it's, you know, like, 3D sort of open world uh, action adventure RPG fantasy setting which initially feel you know it's very much like oh the, there is a dragon and he's chosen you as the guy who has to kill him and everyone's scared because there's a dragon you've got to go kill the dragon which is not interesting at all but then basically about halfway through the game the story goes absolutely batshit and gets really interesting and like there's there's a reason why there's a dragon and it's like this whole like it goes re like really heavy into its own law right there's a whole reason why the dragon exists and there's this endless cycle of a dragon appearing someone gets picked to fight it and then like and it's super interesting and yeah and it and like dragon's dogma 2 there was this emphasis on like there is fast travel but really like the resources you need to do it are incredibly rare the reason a lot of people got fed up with that in dragon's dogma 1 was the way the the world was designed it was basically there was there's like two sort of main regions of the map there's like a southern region and northern region and there was pretty much like one route between them. There's like this one sort of coastal path. And God, you had to walk it a lot, like a lot of times um, during the course of the game. Um, and this sort of like Dragon's Dogma 2 sort of immediately solves that in that the world is just way bigger. And there's so many more routes you can take between places. And yes, there are times where you can't be asked going somewhere on foot and you will use either fast travel or there's these ox carts you can get on. Um, and then they sort of, you know, take you to different places, but by and large, like the, the travel itself is like an absolute joy, right? See, so it's, go on, sorry, James. This is what I wanted to ask you about, because you see, mm. whenever you'd spoken about Dragon's Dogma, you generally talk about the story and about mm. how this was, you know, it, how brilliant this was and how, mm. but you, I've not, but what about like the actual game? Like, is, is this fun? Like, oh God, yeah, yeah. So out? like, <laughs> And again, the, the the thing that the first Dragon's Dogma did really well was that, like, so I believe it was some of the people who worked on, like, Devil May Cry did the mm -hmm. combat. So although you've got, you know, there, there's your typical sort of fantasy classes, so fighter, mage, um, and then, like, rogue or strider, I think they called it. Um, but then there was, like, these other weird classes. Um, there was, like, one that's called, like, the Mystic Knight, who, like, if you, someone fired magic at you, you could do like a perfect block to like absorb the magic into your shield and then your shield would glow with that magic type and then you'd be able to do all the abilities with it and stuff. Um, then there was like the magic archer, which is like playing res. You just sort of wave the cursor over a load of enemies and it like targets them all and then, just, and then just shoot magic at them all. It was just really, really good fun. Like the combat is amazing. And again, the first game really sort of lent into like there's these huge creatures that you have to fight and you can climb around on them and like... And even like, you know, you can climb on a griffin and then it just starts flying up in the air and it's fucking terrifying. And mm -hmm. you're there just trying to stab it, its eye so it fucking falls to the ground again. Um, that stuff was like all like so much fun. Um, and that stuff is way more common in this game. So mm -hmm. as you are traveling around, there'll be lots of, you know, rank and file sort of goblins or the thieves or whatever. And then, yeah, and then a griffin will just crash in out of nowhere or a massive ogre or 
a fucking dragon, right? There, there's more. There's more than one. There's these like what they call them drakes, like right? effectively like lesser dragons, and they're just yeah. Like sometimes they're, they're a pain, but most of the time it's just funny and exciting, and and they just they're just there to ruin your day. But they're so much fun to fight. Um, it's just such a good experience in this game. Like, and I think what what's really cool is knowing that there was a sequel to Dragon's Dogma coming. I was like, okay, they'll you know they'll they'll make the world better. It will look nicer. They, they'll do stuff to the combat, but like. How's it going to make the story weird again? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, how's it going to do that? Is it going to be weird right off the bat? Um, as I say, the story in the first game was genuinely quite boring for the first half, and then it went nuts. This is more interesting right off the bat, and it gets weirder. Um, I mean, this is the obvious question, but do you, does it benefit from having played the first? Yes, um, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't like tell anyone they have to play the first. I mean, I wouldn't like. Obviously, it's twelve years old now. It's it's aged. Um, I wouldn't like recommend necessarily anyone like run out and play the first oh, like when now that the second is out. Um, yeah, there there have been like some very clear references to the first game that as a fan I'm like, oh my god, that's such and such a thing. Um, and just yeah, it's it's been. So, I mean, I've put like forty hours into it over the last couple of weeks. It's wow, been absolutely okay. nuts, and I don't want to stop playing it. Yet. It's as I say, just just the experience of traveling around and. Like, you know, so you'll be in one city and you know you need to travel somewhere else for a, for a quest, right? Mm -hmm. And not only do you get, like, a choice of directions you can go, there's, like, you know, there'll be several routes there. But then so often, like, you'll forget where you were supposed to be heading because you'll just wander off and be like, oh, shit, there's a path over there. Or um, no, a monster attacks you and then you get sort of turned around and you end up going a different direction and be like, oh, shit, no, I'm in this place instead now, actually. And it's just so good. Like, the world is stunning as well. Like, I mean, that... but... Go on, sorry. That's the focus, isn't it? Because it's like mm. this idea of the journey is is the main thing with this. Yep. Is that it's about yeah. getting from place to place rather than so, which yeah. is and one of the reasons why the fast travel is so limited. Exactly, from what like I've it heard. would yeah. it would ruin it if you could mm -hmm. fast travel or if you were paying money to fast travel as much as you wanted. You're only spoiling it for yourself, really. As mm -hmm. I say, that there are times when you know, say you've you've just spent an hour getting from one place to another, and then it's the the next objective is like right, you've got to go back. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll use a magic stone to teleport back. Thanks. That's, I don't need to see the same route again. Um, see, I remember the, playing the first... You see, the first one I played, but only for about two or three hours, and mm -hmm. then I stopped. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm aware that that is not giving it enough of a, mm. a shake, really. But I played it on the Switch, and it was mm -hmm. quite... As you said, it's 12 years old, and it was mm -hmm. not... It was not great mm -hmm. <laughs> what I played from that. <laughs> but I, I remember in that you 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 have kind of like a party, right? That you're you're with. Yes. In that. So it has the the pawn system. That's P A W N. American listeners, pawn pawn pawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so basically, the <clears throat> the the law justification for this is that there's yeah there's this race of like mercenaries, I guess, um, called pawns who will only like they they they're kind of like they're not completely mindless. But they are endlessly devoted to the Arisen, which is you, the player character, whoever the dragon chooses, like to kill, like to kill the dragon, right? So they will do whatever you say. So you have your main pawn, who you create and you name them, and you choose what class they're and everything. And then you can hire two support pawns, right? Um, which are other players' main pawns. Um, now this this was all what James Sorry, Sean, literally what's, just smirking what's... at the, me saying porn over and no, over. I'm just wondering what's what's your main pawn, uh, Sean? Uh, he's called Incrediman. Um, okay. And he's usually topless. Um, I've set his his, a weird skin, search. his skin is set to maximum <laughs> glisten. Um, oh, oh, like Edward from uh, Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, he's great. He was he was a, a fighter. He's now a mage. Um, he's he's got some lovely sort of white robes. He's had to handsome. change careers. I mean, yeah, 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 that's quite common, isn't it these days? It's really good. He actually meet. comments on that as well. Like some other one of the, another porn that I had was like, oh, have you always been the same vocation? He's like, no, I used to be a fighter defending our master with shield in hand <laughs> so he's a pretty As hardcore say, pawn you'd say what's sorry he's a pretty hardcore pawn he's a very say. hardcore pawn yeah yeah, yeah. okay um, oh, that sounds like you're saying nah, saying what that's, Matt? That's, a, that's a shame don't, don't know what you're talking about um yeah and basically the whole pawn system is fascinating a lot of this is from the first game um <laughs> sorry, that <laughs> one got me as well <laughs> yeah no, a okay. lot of this is from the first game, but it's been massively, it's been expanded and refined and works a lot better. But basically, the the interesting thing about the, I feel like I'm self-conscious every time I say it now, pawn system, 
Um, it's, if you hire someone else's pawn, they don't level up when they play with you, right? They don't they don't get stronger, <laughs> but they do <laughs> learn about how to fight certain monsters and how to do certain quests, right? And what's interesting about that is it basically means a lot of the quests are designed in a way that like you can't you can't really figure them out by yourself, but you can James. I'm sorry, I was just thinking, I mean, Sean, could I, could I hire your pawn? Like, you can hire my pawn. Okay, Absolutely. we've got to, to get borrow your pawn. Yes. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I've listened to a few podcasts this week where I talk about it, so no <laughs> one's ever gotten off in a fit of giggles. Well, as just... I say, I think any other accent, it's very obvious when people are saying porn or porn. Is it, I mean? though? <laughs> it's just, yeah. Turns out English accents are bad. Okay, okay. Who knew? I've done. I'm um, done. Sorry. Continue. Uh, I'm not saying. I'm not done saying porn though. That's the problem. Just. I'm just going to keep going. Okay. So. Yeah, they learn how to do certain quests. So there are quests where you'll be given an objective, and there's not necessarily any way of like finding out where you need to go or who you need to speak to or whatever. Or there is, but it's quite long-winded or whatever. But the idea is, you can hire a pawn who knows. <laughs> Right, because they've already... I knew he's going to... Oh, God, James! You might just have to mute yourself, man. I don't know. <laughs> I know we tell you not to mute yourself when you're laughing, but... Um, yeah, so... you like, and, and again, this is something they've made way more obvious. So if you're... Whatever your currently selected quest is, when you, you go to the rift, right? And that's where you're surrounded by pawns, James. There's pawn <laughs> everywhere. Um, <laughs> he's actually going to die. This is going to be what finishes him off. So to speak, um, and uh, yeah, and basically, when you when you're searching for them, it will tell you if they if they've done your current quest or not. So then suddenly that quest goes from like, oh, I've no idea what the fuck to do, to then you've got a pawn. It's just like, yeah, I've, I've done this. Follow me, and then they'll just run off, and then you and then you follow them, and they you know tell you what to do, which is really useful. So so that's so, if you meet a certain one that knows that, but often yes. the ones you meet. They may have no idea, but it's just like a throw of the dice whether they it's, know. No, as I say, so when, when you search, it tells you. Um, oh, okay, right. And then also when you look at your, your like, all the quests you've currently got, it'll tell you which of your pawns know it already. Okay. And what's cool is, obviously, your pawn can be hired by other people. So if, some, if someone's further on in the game than you, they could hire your pawn, use it, and then your pawn gets loads of knowledge of, like, later quests that you've not done. Um and then vice versa, like someone could hire mine who's already like, because I'm, you know, because I was lucky enough to be able to play it early. So a lot of people are hiring my guy and then he knows like loads of the main quests up to a certain point. Um, it's, cool. it's such a fascinating system. I still really love it. And there's, and it gets weirder because when you, so if you hire someone else's pawn and when you dismiss it, when, you, when you're done, um, <laughs> when you're done with the, done with the pawn. <laughs> I can't, okay. Um, he's bright red. Look at that. That's... I think James is, James is gonna burst. It looks like a tomato, a tomato. You can send them a gift, James, with the pawn. When you send the pawn back, you can send them with a gift, and it can be, as far as I can tell, anything. And again, this was something the first game did, but I'm already seeing opportunities where you could give someone like quite an important item from later in the game, and help them skip stuff from earlier on, right? No spoilers. I haven't tested any of this. Oh, really? Just, well, just, okay, yeah, well, yeah. Skip certain okay missions, maybe because you've given them a better reward than the mission might give them. Uh, no, literally. So, like, so this was a yeah. In the first game, there were examples where someone would be like, "Oh, I'm, I'm I need this." I think I talked last week about the, this guy needs like a magic. But I know it was on the stream. I did that was it. I did a quick uh, Dragon's Dogma stream the other day, or the other week, in fact. And um, I was saying, yeah. So like, there's a quest where this guy's like, "Oh, I want this like." magic book right and it's really powerful and it'll give you really powerful magic and that's like a whole quest and it can take you know it's like a whole chain of quests and it can take hours but if you've if you've got a friend who's already done that quest and got the book and sent it to you as a gift before you've done that quest you can be like oh yeah i need this book it's going to take you ages to get it and you can go like no here you go i've got it cheers and then you just skip it, right? But I mean, that's a cool system. But is that robbing like them that. of some of the experience? Or... It is, yeah. Okay. But that's just sort of, yeah. You're just sort of buying into the the weirdness of it, basically. I love. That, I think it's like, like and it's a tool for like speedrunners as well, obviously, right? Like yeah. it's interesting to see how much you can skip mm -hmm. by having other people just send you shit from later on in the game. Um, and like, there there are so many different ways that the quests can go, right? Even ones that seem really simple. So. As an example, mild spoilers for a very small quest that's like 
fairly early on in the game. You arrive at this town and this guy sort of comes up to you and he's like, oh, I've, like, I've, I've lost this this orb, right? It's like this gem, this the, the jade, jadeite orb, I think he calls it. Um, and he's like, I've lost it. Like, can you help me find it? Because I'm in huge trouble. If my boss finds out I haven't got it. I'm going to get the shit kicked out of me. He doesn't use those words. Um, and you're like, yeah, okay, I'll find it. And as you trying to find this orb and then someone else approaches you and it's the guy's boss right and he's like yeah I'm, I'm well aware this guy's lost it i'm trying to find it can you help me find it so basically you then so you've got two objectives where it's like find well find the orb and then who do you give it to right um and the the, the first guy you talk to is like yeah to be honest if you do give it me i'm gonna sell it and use the money to get away from my boss because he's awful fair enough um so eventually you find it but there's a there's a forgery shop. There's a shop where a guy he sells like rare stuff, but he will also forge items for you, and he will he will forge anything from a bit of fucking grass that you've picked up to, for example, a rare gem that you found as part of a quest. So you can get him to make a forgery. So I don't, so I got him to do that. Then took the original to the first guy because he seemed nicer, and I was like, here you go, is is the real one? And he's like, cheers. And then I went to the prick. And gave him the forgery, and I was like, "Ha, ah, this is great. He's gonna have there no idea." And <laughs> and I gave it to him, and he's like, "Right, cool. Um, there's a forgery shop just down the road, so we'll just check it's the real one, uh, <laughs> if you don't mind." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, fuck. Uh, no. So you've got to walk with him to the shop, and he's like, "Yeah, he's like, yeah, we just want to check this is the real deal, if that's okay." And the guy, you know, the guy's like, "Oh yeah, this will take me a little while." And then and this guy's like, "Right, I'll, well, I've I've got other business to deal with, so I'll, I'll come back in a bit." And then you go to the the guy in the shop and you're like here's a thousand gold could you please <laughs> tell him it's tell him it's the real one and he's like no um and it's like right here's two thousand gold can you please lie for me and he's like nope not doing it and then and you can see the guy like walking back towards you and he's just like i'm about to get my fucking head kicked in six thousand gold please lie to him and tell him it's the real one and eventually he gives in can you can so, you not murder the shopkeeper you could. You actually could. You can mm -hmm. kill anyone in this game. But can you kill the, is... the guy who's pretending you're going to kick off of you? Yes. Yeah, that would that would be an option. Um, I believe you can also rat out the, the first guy that you speak to, and then you just, yeah, the, the, the boss gets his minions to kick the shit out of him. And yeah, so ends up be, yeah, convincing the guy to lie on my behalf, and I got away with it, as far as I'm aware. Afterwards, all, all my pawns were like, oh, I don't feel good about this. I think there's going to be repercussions. And I'm like, yeah, but for now... Classic pawns. So there's just, even within a little quest like that, there's just so many different ways it could play out, right? You could just get the orb and just give it to whoever, and then that's that. But then the forgery stuff comes in. There's another quest where there's like this kid who's like, I need to go on a journey to this other town, but I need help packing my bag. And he's like, right, I'm likely to face like these monsters. So I'm going to need like something that's good against this status effect, something that's going to help Cyclopses not notice me and some healing stuff or whatever. And then you just get a completely free choice of what items you give him. So I'm assuming you could just give him a load of shit and I assume he has trouble on the journey and, <laughs> and maybe dies. I don't know. I right. gave him all the correct stuff and he came back and I was like, oh, thank fuck for that. Just loads of little things like that. Like in, in side quests that you're just like, man, this, this could probably play out really differently. Um, yeah, maybe... on some of the podcasts I've listened to talk about this, it just, mm -hmm. there feels like so many stories with... Mm -hmm what could from the outside seem to appear really simple quests but mm -hmm. with all the various uh kind of uh emergent stuff that can happen and then all the various variables that can happen within mm -hmm. those emergent stuff it sounds yeah mm -hmm. like so many people's journeys and stories will be different based on what mm -hmm. they did in their missions and how they tackled certain parts of the game yeah so that's totally. that's what's interesting because i mean i was just thinking of the witcher like the witcher 3 mm -hmm. with that but then it's not really the same because with that you don't really get different consequences or whatever but it's just the mm. fact that stories kind of just don't go where you're expecting them to and it's yeah. really kind of interesting but this I is mean, more like... <clears throat> sorry go on. this is more based on the the fact that you know you can change so many variables and it really does significantly alter yeah you know, how yeah. things play out is this like, the same for the main story as well do you know it's not entirely clear i think the main story will change once you're in like new game plus and you've got more knowledge of what's coming and a bit more freedom about how you how you do things. Because that was, again, that was how the first game operated. Because you were in this position where it's like, well, actually, I know where to get certain items before certain things happen. And you can start fucking with it. So I don't know if that ha this one has like the same sort of scope for that yet. 
I mean, well, does I, I it have a story length for it's like a, an oblivion where it could be like hundreds of hours, or could you actually mainline the main story relatively? I think you quickly? could mainline the main story relatively quickly. I think mean, what I've done is wrong. I <laughs> so there's like two nations in the game. You start off in this one, and then eventually the story calls for you to go to this other one. I went to the second nation before the story wanted me to and like had like an amazing experience because i had to like sneak in right because there's like a, a you know big gate at the at the border and like no, not a big gate and stuff. bloody uh, hell they're the worst of it. um and uh yeah and they want to see your papers and stuff and i didn't have any so but there's other ways right to, to sneak through and then so i i traveled like the whole like length of the the map basically um and then eventually was like, right, this has been really fun, but I should probably go back. And like, there weren't any quests or anything. It was just, there was like, you know, there's, there's other towns and cities and stuff. And like, and it was really cool visiting them, but none of it felt, I was like, yeah, I really should just go back to where all my quests are and stuff. But when you do, when you get sent to the other country as part of a main quest, suddenly it like comes alive, right? And people are approaching you with, with, with missions and stuff. And I was like, right, I probably like I had a really good time doing that initial sort of exploration but I probably could have saved myself about 10 hours and not done that, right? And just waited wait, for yeah. the game. Because this has been an interesting thing, just even among people I know who are playing it, like it does encourage you to just fuck off and explore and, and do whatever you want. But I, it, I think after the time I've spent with it, part of me is like, probably do let the quests guide you initially at least until you sort of got a working knowledge of like you know a, mm -hmm. a fair bit of the map and then worry about like exploring that's kind of weird for a game that's built on that stuff that you did that and it didn't feel as satisfying you kind of thought it'd be like well it may not be in the mm. way the game intended me to play but look mm. at these adventures i had look at how i did it and well yeah it, seems it, it, actually was, it was wasn't... worth it i mean it's just yeah just being time poor as we are a part of me is like maybe, maybe I should have just waited until I was told to go here, and then it would have been a, like a smoother experience. But then also, I, I will never forget the experience of like sneaking through and like fighting my way through to this this other country. Like it was like such a good bit, mm. but at the cost of yeah, sort of things feeling sort of relatively lifeless when I got there, as opposed to now, where as I say, mm. there's like all these stories and, and characters booting off in this this second like nation. Um, it, I absolutely adore it in case that isn't clear. Um, like, I, like I knew I probably would, um, but there was every chance that, because, you know, there, there's stuff in the first game that's missing. Like a lot of the classes from the first game aren't, aren't in this one. But paid DLC. I, but yeah, paid DLC. Isn't there, it's, DLC. there's more stuff coming though, isn't there? Because they are adding, like with patches, they're adding it. Because one, of the, one mm. of the other complaints I read was about how it's quite difficult to like have multiple characters like you can't do that yet yes, is that right you can only have like one set well i think yeah you can only have one save and you can't like you can't start a new game once you've mm -hmm. made a character which is weird um i don't know if there are capital r reasons for that well um, that's one of the things that's that's coming in part of the yeah, new patch yeah, yeah, yeah they mentioned that um yeah it's just been such a good time like just the the joy of discovering the world like it looks so good like i know people moaning about the, the performance and stuff yeah the, like it's 30 frames occasionally a little bit lower than that um but like the fact that people are so upset by it that they're actually plotting to murder loads of npcs have you seen this stuff yeah i no? heard that this is to, <laughs> to improve the frame rate wasn't it they were like yeah this... i don't even know if it'll work it's like cause the frame rate's definitely worse in like towns and stuff right where there's loads of people milling about trying to get on with their day um so you can tell that it's like that's a big performance hit because it's it, i don't think i think it's one of those where it's very cpu heavy mm -hmm. um so it's not actually like the it looking as good as it does is not the reason it's all the the weird physicsy stuff and the behavioral stuff that's going on that, that slows it down so yeah so some people are like oh well if i just murder everyone that'll speed things up it's like yeah that's a normal normal thing to think and, and do isn't it <laughs> It's good. Um, <laughs> how how does it compare, like visually, to like okay, to like Baldur's Gate three? Like, oh, it's it's it, yeah, looks nice. Because I didn't Gate think that looked sure. that great, honestly. <laughs> yeah, what you mean? Um, it's it, like certainly in a lot of places. I mean, by all means, play this back in ten years, and we can have a laugh about it. There are times where it looks fucking real, mm -hmm. like it's absolutely insane how good it's the lighting and stuff. Like, the, and like I say, the behavior, like when you're walking down a path. And then a griffin fucking lands in front of you. Like the movement of all the grass and the trees and everything, you can see there's all the calculations of like the, the how the air's moving everywhere. Like it just looks so good. Um, nighttime is absolutely terrifying. 
Um, like it's, it is pitch black unless you've got a torch and also ghosts start coming out. Um, there are reasons. Of the torch? You... Hmm? Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Ghosts start coming out, but not of the torch. Just no, in general. Just, just out of the air. Okay, because that would be a terrible torch. They, wherever go, where do ghosts come from? Um, spirit mirrors, realm. Spirit realm. There you go. Um, it just, yeah, it's just incredible what like Capcom have done with this one engine. Like the the range of games that, like the fact this is the same game that was running, you know, like Monster Hunter on the Switch or whatever, is is nuts. Like how different this looks. The fact that it's a huge open world. There's no loading screens. Obviously, there's an initial one, but after that, it's all completely seamless. Um, it's absolutely wild. Um, you keep talking about the kind of adventure. I mean, would would is there any comparison between something like Breath of the Wild, where there was you wouldn't know what's around the corner, or even what if there was a corner, and mm. that that was a fascinating and um, um, what was so good about Breath of the Wild, just mm. not knowing what was happening and where you can go, what you could chance mm. upon. Is it that kind of level yeah. of? Yeah, hundred okay. percent. Yeah, that there's like there's good. again, it's not wanting to spoil stuff. Cause it's one of those games where you don't like. I could tell you what happens in the main story and it might not actually affect your enjoyment that much, but I could tell you about a thing I spotted and a cool little adventure I went on because of it and that would ruin it more. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so the, but yeah, there the are just things like you'll be walking around and then I spotted like some ruined architecture and was like, that looks really different. It had like a sort of Celtic design to it rather than like the stuff I've been seeing previously. I was like, I wonder if that's significant. And it totally was. And following that was like a whole, like a really nice experience. Just, yeah, little stuff like that. And it just properly adds up. I think what's really cool as well is like, uh, so it has this thing they call the loss mechanic where in the first game, if you got the shit kicked out of you repeatedly, your like maximum health would reduce, right? Like temporarily, like next next, you know, you could like use items. There were items that healed you, but then there were items that raised your maximum health back to full, right? In this game, the latter is not a thing, right? You can heal yourself to your maximum, but that maximum will reduce over time. Like as you get get into fights, as you're on a journey, but every time you camp or you rest at an inn or whatever, it goes back up. So you'll get into these these scrapes where you're like. I am in a bad way now. Healing items are only doing so much. I need to find a campsite and not get into too many fights in the in the, the process. And that stuff is really fun. It can be quite frustrating if you if you sort of end you, you end up in a point where like you've hardly got any healing items and you, you the loss mechanic has really fucked you. Like you've got basically really low maximum health. It can be quite frustrating because you need to avoid basically any combat, which is really difficult to do. But it's worth it because most of the time it sort of rides that line of being like a bit tense and forcing you to be careful. Um, and then when you find a campsite, it's like fucking brilliant. And then you cook some meat, which weirdly there's like live action footage of. Have you heard about this? Whenever, whenever you cook food in the game, it, there's just some actual filmed footage of some meat cooking on a fire. That's brilliant. It's, it's, I like that. <laughs> How, okay. It's so strange. I just, I mean, it's, it's fine. I don't care. It's just, just a weird thing to have done. Do they, have they like, got that for any other things? Like, you know, like when you're in a bar, like, you know, like somebody <laughs> no, picking up a pint and having a drink and it's like a real person doing it, you know? <laughs> literally just cooking meat. And meat is the only thing you can cook when you camp as well. Even though you, you can pick up other, like, you know, there's like fruit and veg and stuff that you, you can eat through the menus. But when you're at camp, you are cooking a steak and that's it. Like, it's, <laughs> it's so weird. Um, what else is I mean there's there's so much stuff to go on about the the pawns can oh no James is gonna fucking start I'm, right, again. I'm, I'm over that now they I'm can good. spread diseases between between each other James there's a disease they can catch so you can spread disease with your pawn you can spread disease with your pawn um, it's called dragon blight and I won't spoil what it does but it's genuinely terrifying and like the game makes you aware that it's a thing but there are like signs you have to look out for. So as you're hiring, if you hire a pawn who's got dragon blight, you can pass it on to your pawn, and then you have to like watch, like their eyes start to go red and they start like ignoring your commands or telling you to. Fuck Is off there any stuff. protection for this, Sean? Uh, no. Okay. No protection available, um, other than throwing your pawn into the sea. Or a bush. Or, or a bush. <laughs> so well, well, once a pawn dies, is it is it permadeath? Or... No, no. So no. the pawn always when, when a pawn, pawns never actually die; they just go back to the rift. Um, and then you can you can summon them again. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's, there's this whole disease, and, like, and it's, it's just been fascinating watching the community sort of work out 
how this disease thing works and, and what the results are of it. I mean, if you, if I looked it up, and I'm glad I did because it's horrible. Um, <laughs> if you really don't want any spoilers, then don't look it up. But I, I would personally, um, because it's kind of incredible um, what it does and like the impact it has on the game is. is but is this something that, like, um, is this something that can affect the whole like entire community, or is it just kind of isolated to your game? Is it like it's oh, isolated to your 40% game? Forty yeah. percent of the of the Dragon's Dogma kind of players have this, and it's spreading, and you have to so work the, together the, to fix it. Or not? The theory is that it's when someone starts new game plus their pawn then has this disease and they can pass oh, it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So it's like so at the moment there aren't loads with it, but as time goes on, there's gonna be more and more and more, right? Um can it be cured? Sorry. Did you say the only way I think my understanding is the only way to cure it is if your pawn passes it on to another one. Um or yeah, like or if your pawn dies while they've they've got it. Oh so, so it's like it where yes. or tag. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah okay, yeah. right. Um, I thought you meant the film then. I was like, no, oh, it's not like that. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of people who are just like, yeah, if your pawn's eyes go red, just throw them into the sea and then summon them again, it'll be fine. Um, so it's just like COVID, really. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Um, RIP. Yeah, just loads of weird shit in it. I don't just it's fascinating to me. I I love it. It doesn't put its best foot forward. It's a slow start. Um, if you if you decide to check it out and you get like and you're an hour in and you're just like this is just, I'm just walking around shooting things with arrows and there's the, all the dialogue's really weird the dialogue's never good right it's never the, the, the sort of old english stuff i'm fine with it it's clearly done sort of for a laugh um and you know 90 percent of the voice actors are really sort of on board with it but it's never you know you comparisons to like the witcher 3 before the writings like the the situations are really interesting and the scenario is really interesting but the moment-to-moment -moment dialogue is never like particularly emotive or anything, or anything you know. Um, but I mean, fine. I yeah, it's very like ye olde, like, yes, squire, etc., yeah, yeah, etc. Yeah. I do. I really hope you you persevere with it, Matt. I know you've got Final Fantasy VII to to sort out. And James, I think you would really like it too. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna try and. I do think Dave would like it if he can get past the like. Maybe set it to like a foreign language or something. Yeah, or put on mute. He'll yeah, be yeah, fine. Just mute all the speech. Um. But I, yeah, the combat and the exploration is is so good. It makes like I was never a big Skyrim guy, but it reminds me of the stuff I liked about Skyrim, just going for a fucking wander and finding beautiful, cool stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm the idea wondering. about it being, you know, about a rewarding curiosity and mm. just adventuring around. It's not about the destination; it's about the journey. That that yeah. sounds really, really exciting. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, on, on, I've got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to play first, but this is on, would, on system you like downloaded and installed, ready to go. Would you like to talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Matt? Because I've talked about um, it. I, I haven't got much more to say. I mean, I'm, I'm basically <laughs> still playing it, really. I mean, I, cool. I, 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 I'm, I'm in the Junon region, which is like the, the second la second next, the second large um, open area that you go through. And yeah, I'm still basically making sure I do every single possible thing before I move on. I could have got through a lot further in this game mm -hmm. had I not suddenly decided that i have to do everything before moving on um but yeah i haven't got much more to say i'm still still loving I mean, it are, still you, are you enjoying it. doing everything or is it just yeah yeah no it, I, to... I can't stop it's really really okay. compelling i guess That's a lot fun. of people might just see the things you do such as like scanning a certain number of enemies or you know going for the various combat missions or following these birds that take these crystals to mm. you know doing something the other or just doing various side missions or playing Queen's Blood against various people and all the other various mini games, they might see that as um, busy work. Uh, but I, yeah, it's it's enjoyable enough for me. Um, I mean, I've, I've really kind of barely seen story, really, because there's some cutscenes at the beginning, a little tiny one as I went to June on, and and now I'm just kind of back into the the open area, the, the open zone with all the various kind of things to do. So haven't had an awful lot of story really, but. Um, and so that's the only thing really that might push me forward to maybe not complete every single side mission. But the only reason I'm kind of doing this was, was because when I play Rebirth, I didn't intend to play it, do everything in that game. And then I kind of ended up, I did do that, but apart from one side mission that I couldn't, that I missed, because at that point I was like, oh, I'll do some, I just didn't bother with that one particular one. And then you couldn't go back. And I'm like, and it's always like kind of, you know, I've always been thinking about that one bloody side mission I didn't do, and I could have done it all. But <laughs> so this time, I'm, like, I'm not making that mistake again. I'm gonna do everything I can until I decide I'm I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, I think I'm only like 27 hours in. Um, is that so? All? 
I've got another <laughs> 60 odd hours to go at least. Is it? <laughs> um, I wonder if I will stop doing everything at one point, but who knows? Um, yeah, I'm still, still absolutely loving the game. I think it looks yeah, absolutely gorgeous. It's a joy, joy it, to play. Keep going, isn't it? If you're enjoying it, just keep yeah. doing all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't get excited. James, oh, yeah, he always going towers... with stuff he hates. <laughs> not always but it does happen quite frequently yeah I'm always towers to climb these enemies to fight these things to do it's like it, for whatever reason it, it's grabbed me and uh, yeah I'm I'm having a blast so far doing it oh good um, if you're on to me I, I guess we can talk about this I also last week got to use an Apple Vision Pro oh yeah 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 because I got one at work basically mm. Mm. Um, how, how was it it, I mean, I guess I can class myself as an Apple fanboy. I mean, mm. I'm in like, you know, a Discord where we talk about Apple stuff. Um, I buy lots of the things day one because I'm an idiot. Um, and I will rush home and watch WWDC, which is the Apple kind of show when they announced mm. um, iOS, etc. So I guess you can say I'm an Apple fanboy. And um, yeah, it's probably not worth the three and a half grand. I will say mm. it, it, it's an incredibly impressive product. Even when you first put it on and... Uh, whereas with a lot of VR, and this isn't a VR headset, it's spatial computing, that's what Apple have called it, but with a lot of other VR, AR headsets, mm -hmm. you'll go in and, and when you have to kind of adjust kind of the, the lenses, maybe that'll be a physical thing on the device, maybe that'll be something in software. For this, you put it on your head and it, uh, you know, and this UI appears um, in, the, in the environment you're in, and whether that's your physical, whether that's like the office or building or the room you're actually physically in, in physical space, or mm -hmm. this virtual environment you can turn on by turning the digital crown on the headset. But you see this UI and it basically says, look at these two dots. And then the lenses just like change. You can feel them like moving. <laughs> To, to align perfectly so there's no like change your ipd settings yeah, yeah, yeah. or go to here go there um it has a battery so it's got like a, a you know a braided cable from the headset into this you know this like small battery pack i put it, i put it in my pocket it wasn't an issue i didn't feel mm -hmm. too tethered you know I mean, yeah like, like i've done that in the way the, done that with the quest plenty of times yeah. not really um i guess you know I've, i felt worse when i've had the quest or whatever connected to a pc so mm -hmm. it didn't bother me too much the only issue is that even that battery pack has only got two hours of battery life mm -hmm. um but I, I guess that's some of the weird yeah so like it, it, all the ui and the whole um headset is controlled using eye tracking not with a controller not with anything mm -hmm. else so and and that took me only a very very short time to get used to at first i was um you know looking at the the ui and you'll see what looks kind of like a mixture between the apple watch ui and ipad and ios you know it seems very familiar if you've used any apple product which is definitely one of the benefits um but you know, at first I was maybe moving my head around as you would do with a headset, but then very quickly, you know, you just you're just looking around with your eyes. And because, you know, your eyes have pretty much pinpoint kind of accuracy, like some of the UI elements to like close like close a window you've got open or to scroll, you can look at something really, really small and you know, use your fingers to tap and go up and down. It's not like say on um yeah, again, other VR headsets or other things maybe you use on phones or on the web where you've got like incredibly small UI kind of things to work with. It feels a bit fiddly because your eyes are looking at this thing and it can be totally small because you, you've got pinpoint accuracy with your eyes. Mm -hmm. It really, really works, actually. Um, cool. Like surprisingly well, within moments, I was getting used to it. Mm -hmm. In terms of some experiences, one thing that a lot of people were raving about is there's this dinosaur experience. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, but I, I will say, first of all, it, look, graphically, it looks absolutely amazing. But what you're seeing is um, you've got the headset on, you open the app, and essentially this kind of window uh, appears on your on the closest wall to where you're looking. So if you're in, you know, whatever room you're in, the closest wall, there's this kind of, um, it, it, it doesn't encompass your entire view. It's just, I mean, it's hard to, hard to describe a size, but a large portion of this wall in front of you, it, it shows this like dinosaur-like environment. And then, a, a dinosaur two kind of come up and then they they swing around and they're kind of like looking at things and they're running away because they hear another dinosaur but you can't step into that environment like it's not right. like other vr things where mm. you know you'll look down and you're in you're in the you know the rainforest or you're in you're on the moon like you're just looking at it at a wall in front of you and if you go towards that wall which i want which is what i did because i wanted to be in amongst the dinosaurs it disappears because it's on the wall and it's kind of mm. like there to protect you so instantly i was like this is really weird and kind of off-putting it's not... more like passive isn't it it's like passive consumption of this stuff rather than 
yeah. being it's not it's viewing. not immersive. Mm. It's like me yeah. watching like a hundred a one eighty kind of those VR like videos or yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. I mean, like, so at one point, it's a little bit like, you know, those billboards we've seen in, in Japan and other places where it's like a billboard in like a city center and uh, it looks like the thing is actually coming out of the billboard, you know, that, yeah, with that yeah, 3D yeah. effect. Mm. It kind of did that at one point where the dinosaur came up and it kind of poked his head out of the wall, out of the screen, and then turned around and the tail came out. Um, and yeah, graphically, it looked re incredibly detailed. Um, but I was just kind of like looking at it and thinking, yeah, I don't know. I just, I thought I'd be in and amongst the environment and i wasn't and that was kind of strange um there's this game they've got which is kind of like unpacking but in in ar what's in you know, <laughs> ar and but so you get this board in front of you and i play one level where it looked like a college dorm um you see things like a bed and some kind of bits of furniture but it's also it's a gray parts of this small um this, this, this location and then to your left you have okay i think it had like a games console some like tape decks and you basically grab them you you know to your left and you move them over to this physical kind of it's almost like a diorama this location mm -hmm. in front of you i will say one thing is that you can move the board um and you can like make it big you make it small but wherever you place it it is locked into place like that is so rare for any kind of game in, in vr or ar which uses objects that are in your physical space because often they kind of like jiggle or they move or they're not mm. sometimes they move yeah, with yeah, you yeah. you've all the vr experiences where like the whole like game will kind of move forward or back depending on how, how good the game is but this thing is just like i put it next to me and i made it big and like it it, it was just locked solid and that does a lot for like the immersion mm. um yeah. yeah this game is like you know quite quite nice music it was very relaxing i can imagine why you can have it kind of in front of you sat down in your you know, doing unpacking like things in AR. Um, mm -hmm. It looked really nice. Again, you can get really, really close to like, the 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 diorama, the, the small environment. It looks really, really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, th there's no kind of screen door effect on the headset, which is where you'd often see like, the lines in between the pixels. In fact, like the pass-through is incredible. Um, when I put the headset on, I then thought, oh, actually, what I want to do is I want to send a spatial video to the headset. Now, spatial video is something that they've enabled um, on the Pro Max phones, and essentially, it's you you have to you when you record you turn you turn it on in settings, but when you record a video in landscape, you can turn on spatial video, mm -hmm. and what that does then is, I mean, I don't know all technical terms, but essentially, it captures a lot more three D information about the picture and about it's, the video. Uh, it's just like the three DS. Uh... Uh, video camera like, is it, yeah, is it just using two lenses basically to make yeah, it yeah yeah. yeah. Image, yeah and again heard loads you know heard i watched apple's keynote sounded really amazing saw the um you know saw when they announced apple vision pro how how immersive these things are again those the videos are quite sad it was like someone like with their headset on like watching like a memory or whatever and whatever mm. i put it on and um maybe it's a video i shot which was wasn't very good it was just like um i went to a concert lod was singing in a few months ago and i thought i'd do like oh, yeah, a panning yeah. shot around the audience mm -hmm. again you press play and i thought i would be fully in the environment now mm -hmm. i didn't know how it was going to work so i was just had my phone at the time but i was like mm -hmm. apple gonna work some magic no i'm again i'm kind of just watching this thing in front of me now this this screen was definitely smaller than what i was seeing on the dinosaurs were but it was you know it was uh, two or three feet in front of me, mm -hmm. and it was just, um, it wasn't a huge screen. And it, the, mm. the video definitely had some depth, but it wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, fucking hell, it's like I'm there. Mm -hmm. It just didn't feel like that at all. And mm. again, maybe it was the quality of the video I took. There's every chance of that. Um, one other one I did was, I did, there's like a moon, uh, like a loon, like a Mars rover thing you can have in front of you, and you can make it massive, and you can look around it. And again, that felt really, really solid. It wasn't moving around the environment at all. It's just there. You can flip dials, flip switches, all that kind of stuff. Here's the most impressive thing I saw. Um, and pornography. I feel a bit... It was pornography, actually. Okay, cool. Uh, what have you been playing, James? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, and this is... Uh, I was, I've been thinking a lot about this, but the most impressive thing I saw was YouTube. Massive. Really? So that, I was this like, is oh, what hang I've on. heard from so many people saying that <laughs> yeah. like, the video experience is what is incredible yeah. with this. So when, uh... when I tried it, we didn't actually have any like, movies downloaded. I think we do have some movies on the device now in installed. But I was like, oh, hang on. let's just see what like, the media stuff is like. So go into YouTube and you, you can make like the screen as big as you possibly want. And um, you know, I put the June 2 trailer on, nice. made it full screen. And I was like, oh, hang on. I, f I, think, I, I think I get this now. Like... I've tried to watch movies on Quest 2 and mm. 
PSVR probably back in the day and and other VR headsets. And you know, yes, you have his like. Uh, apps where you can sit in a cinema screen and watch it on a huge mm. screen but mm. why would anyone ever do that the quality is rubbish watch on your tv if you've got half decent tv yeah. but this I i'm like, wondered, oh, no. like a few times because i've got like blade runner 2049 on 3d dvd right uh, 3d blu-ray even god what i'm talking about um and yeah part of me is like oh would it be worth getting a blu-ray drive to do like a really high quality rip of that and then play it through the quest but uh, i don't know like yes, I say, never... I'd probably probably rather watch it on the telly yeah and be able to like eat snacks without having to lift the <laughs> up a bit see I've, I've tried it a couple of times with psvr2 mm. and it's like it is it's much better than the original one was mm. in terms of like resolution and everything but it still feels cumbersome and i yeah. still would rather just be sitting on my sofa you know yeah. like looking yeah. at a tv screen. Yeah, it's never good but Oh my god! Like watching this, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, I made the screen as big as possible, and it was absolutely massive. I mean, like, God knows what the equivalent is would be in, in inches, but it was absolutely mm. huge. I mean, I had to like kind of move my head to see all the four corners. This huge screen, yeah. And like the 4K June two trailer on YouTube, it looked absolutely crystal clear. Now I'm sure you know if you're like a proper TV aficionado, there might be some issues, but I couldn't see any pixels i couldn't it wasn't blurry it was just like it felt like a 4k video mm-hmm. right in my face on a massive screen and i was like oh i think i get this not that i'm gonna spend or that anyone should spend three and a half grand for this but i'm like <laughs> why is it i have all this technology all the stuff they built all the all the great experience and the ui and the eye tracking and using your fingers and so, like the thing that's impressing me the most is just a big youtube video <laughs> which i thought silly <laughs> but, but no after kind of, that, i was like, like... okay but then do you remember when PSVR came out and there were all these new games with it and we were all just like, yeah, but how about fucking Res though? Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yeah, maybe it's <laughs> kind of like that, yeah. How about that experience? But that's even better. It? After I was just... like, how, like, how could it work for productivity? So I had, mm. you know, June 2 there and you can move these windows, you can make them as big as you want. Uh, if I buy a MacBook or Apple, Apple computer, you can kind of use, you can make a big version of that screen as well if you wanted to. But I had that. I had like iOS notes to my right. I had this like keyboard, which you can move around in 3D space. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, hang on. I, again, I can see, I can see why this would work productivity wise. Mm-hmm. If you've got something on YouTube, maybe you're monitoring, you're making notes, or maybe you're watching, like a, you know, um, a stream, you can have the notes there. And it felt natural to type on the keyboard. Just in front of me. That's impressive. I was like, okay, this, and again, because it's all locked in a place and it doesn't feel like shaky, Mm -hmm. that really kind of adds to the immersion. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. I kind of left with some, you know, mixed feelings. Um, Mm -hmm. I think there's only like a couple of games, ones like Fruit Ninja, we we haven't got that or didn't have it installed. But, um, yeah, the movie experience and kind of productivity, which is what they're highlighting, obviously, that's what they want to push this into. Mm. That was really really impressive so i'm going to go back to it when 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 there's more stuff out for it or when they have an update or two but um yeah very interesting it feels very very first gen apple products you know it feels very very much like they're waiting for the experiences and stuff but um yeah interesting i'm I'm glad i got to try it i mean like the pass-through quality is excellent as well i could read text i can do all sorts but no like issue at all sorry james so like i mean okay maybe like five years down the line when this has been revised further, because it will be, they'll just keep iterating on this, presumably, if they're yeah. doing okay. And presumably also the price will probably go like some, say, you know, around yeah. to like a thousand or something like that instead. Mm-hmm. Would this be more tempting, do you think? Yeah, I mean, so I've seen, so this is a Vision Pro, people saying obviously you can be working on the Vision and maybe a Vision S3, mm-hmm. SE back in, you know, a few years down the line, I saw a story the other week saying, oh, the, the next Vision, a Vision Pro could be, you know, two and a half grand cheaper. I was like, well, that's still a grand, you know, that's still, <laughs> or a grand and a half, whatever it's going to be. It's still like much more than many of the main devices, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what price this will have to be to make me kind of, you know, want to get it. I, I also think, you know, when um, when we got Quest 3 and when we got PSVR 2, I took them home for the weekend and played them and stuff. And you can do it with VR headset. You can take it and play the games, have a great time. Like I, when I bought a PSVR James and we played, you know, GT7 and No Man's Sky, but this really truly feels like it. You can't use this for an hour or two and get the experience. You, it feels like if you're using Mac and iOS and stuff, you kind of need to use this for a week and every day mm. to really see how it affects productivity and and whatnot. I didn't get trying like the, the uh, Persona face, the, the video calling That's what's stuff. Ask you, like, did you do like the avatar thing? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure. What, I'm sure someone at work probably knows someone else with one, but no, we, we didn't try that. But um, yeah, I don't know what. I I, I don't know because. 
that you know with a with a quest you can plug into your pc you can play all the steam games with mm -hmm. psvr you know it does have a library but you know we, we wish it was bigger but this it's never going to have that so i don't know I, I don't know what this needs to do to yeah, because surely, like, be with, with it costing as much as it does, the install base is always going to be pretty small, so not a lot of incentive for developers to get on board, unless Apple are paying devs to just make, like, showcase stuff for it. Yeah, I, I think there's always an opportunity when any new hardware comes out for any dev, if, if they want, they've got the time, and they're, studio, they're you know, they're, they're act proactive enough to, like, get in there day one, because you can make a real impact, and us, and... You know, even with a small audience, people can see your product for what it is on the new hardware. Maybe you get a better relationship as well with like the hardware manufacturer. So, mm -hmm. I think if there are some devs out there who want to make a name for themselves, get out there and make mm -hmm. something for Vision Pro, and you might find you know popularity will increase because you're there in a very small pool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I yeah, can't true. see many developers decide to develop for the three and a half grand mm -hmm. Vision Pro right now. But um, I mean, Netflix didn't think it was worth it, did they? Because I haven't... no, well, there's no Netflix, there's no... there's no Spotify, there's no. I think yeah. there's another app that there's, there isn't one at the moment. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it, I'm, gl I'm glad I got a chance to try it, and I'll be trying it again when more things come out. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. Fair dudes. James. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> apart from Hill Divers 2, which I've been mm -hmm. playing, I, I mean, I've you know, clocked over like 20 hours of that now, I think. Really? Because <laughs> it's just Amazing. brilliant, and it? And it's it just... Yeah. And what's so good about it is that you can just pick it up and play for 20 minutes or whatever or even like 10 minutes you know mm. there's so many times recently when i've switched on my ps5 just to and i thought okay i'm gonna play like like a dragon or something like that mm. and then the first icon in there is like hill divers and i'm like yeah i'm gonna play that for a bit <laughs> <laughs> that, just... that's what i'm not like that, that's what i'm missing playing it on pc mm -hmm. that immediacy like i have to really plan to spend an evening with it because i just because on pc it's you know they don't have that sort of seamlessness mm -hmm. to it but yeah, I can imagine that is a lot of fun. It's just so tempting just to yeah. just to play, just to think. Oh, I'm, I'm next. You know, I'm close to getting to the next level. I could just mm -hmm. do a couple of missions and I'll be there. You know, and mm -hmm. unlock some more stuff. And I've been mostly just playing with randoms like the whole time. And it really? generally, yeah, and it generally works pretty well. The community seems quite nice. I mean, mm -hmm. I've only been kicked once or twice. You know, I mean, I got kicked by one like in one game. I was, was going to say, are we going to talk about this? <laughs> which, which, well, no, no, that was another. That was another <laughs> but like, I, I mean, in general, I've been. I was kicked in one game because mm. I was doing an objective too soon, apparently, and so they oh, were yeah. like weren't happy about that. What, so what, what were they trying me. to complete, collect the other kind of samples? And yeah, they were trying like, to collect. Like, mission. They were trying to collect everything, and it's like I was yeah. just like, okay, that's that's fine, but I can still progress this a bit. And they mm. were like, no, no, we're not going to do this. You're then, square. Yeah, we got. Yeah, yeah I had one person, one person going nuts because like, who called the evac? We've got loads of objectives to do. And it's yeah, like... I wasn't even doing that. It was just, yeah. just a very, but yeah, people get really worked up about stuff. And yeah, um, yeah. but this, yeah, you know, it's, it's still brilliant. It's, it's so good. But I mean, the other thing I played this week was Rise of the Ronin, mm. um, because we were given a code for this, and mm. I've been playing it um, mostly over the weekend because it came out on Friday. And I mean, this is, I mean, it's an open world adventure game that's set in like mid 19th century, uh, just when it's when Commodore Perry comes to open up Japan, you know, mm. to, uh, to, the, you know, to foreign trade. And I mean, this is, a, this is like a, I've always found this a very interesting time in Japanese history as well, because it's the time when there's this sort of like forced modernization like takes mm. place and like, how mm. does the state manage to adjust itself to this new reality but still retain what it is and mm. it, it's it's very interesting so it's a good time to set it i mean it's different to because like ghost of tsushima is set like in like 1200 whatever yeah you know, it's, it's like, like it's, years before, it's it? like way 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 back so this is a this is a lot more sort of um i would say sort of modern i guess mm -hmm. and you play the part of like a ronin who's caught up in all this that's going on and at the i mean from the outset of the game there's a really extensive like character customization like set up you can you can create many many things uh from this if you if you really you know if you really want to and you can even like save like codes for your creations and then people can download them so oh, right, okay. you can like you know share like you know like you know, whatever you're going with you know it's it... and so at the start of the game you you basically set up two characters which are like these sort of they're called like sort of twin blades mm. and I think it's supposed to be like in my case. I think it was supposed to be like it's like a brother and sister kind of setup, and then something happens at the beginning of the game where one of where basically 
you have to make a choice as to which one you're going to stick with as your main. And mm. then the other one, something happens to them and that is driving uh, what happens mm. with the story. So the prologue, I mean, with the prologue, it, it's the, the prologue's pretty good because it sets up you trying to assassinate, like, Commodore Perry, like right at the right. start, which is like on this <laughs> ship, which is which is pretty interesting, uh, and then this is when it starts throwing at you all the systems and how things work. Because as a po, I mean, Ghost of Tsushima had like all the like the parry systems, and it had like different stances and everything that you could unlock and uh, you could. But with this, this is on another level in terms of like how many systems this throws at you, and I mean, I'm still not fully on board with all of that. I mean, I'm using mm-hmm. at the moment what is working for me, but mm-hmm. I haven't really started to unlock and try to figure out all the different paths there are because this has a like a very extensive like leveling up system as well, and uh, there's also like different uh, like combat tactic systems that you can unlock and that you can specialize in and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, the combat is great; it's straight up very very good. I mean, it's mostly based on like the parrying system, which I generally am not a huge fan of, but mm-hmm. in this, it's reasonably generous where you don't feel that you're getting to cross about it but once you finish the prologue um you get then chucked out into like the into an open world basically you know where you start to sort of uh, explore and it, it's got that usual mix of sort of you know main encounters and side missions and stuff like that but uh, the open worlds it, like they don't really give you much guidance like to begin with mm-hmm. which is kind of nice because then you start kind of exploring around and you know having a look and it's such this is such a strange game like visually because at times it looks brilliant like mm. it looks really beautiful like out in the countryside sometimes and it has that similar thing to go to Tsushima with like the you know like wavy sort of like grass you know yeah, from the wind yeah, yeah. and all that kind of thing it looks brilliant but then you get to the like the, the city and it looks almost like a PS3 game like it's <laughs> equality like it looks really bad like mm. it's it looks really so, and also there's it's, it's quite janky as well in places you know like your mm-hmm. horse will you know get caught on things and you know you get caught on things and it feels very i wouldn't say unfinished but it doesn't feel so polished particularly mm-hmm. in the cities like in the city also the other thing is there's hardly any people either which feels very strange because this is supposed to be like a bustling port town yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's hardly anyone there but I thought I'd figured this out because one of the one of the loops in the game is that when you go into a new region you it has the usual thing of like having like flags or whatever that you that you hit so then you sort of that's the fast travel points that you that you've um that you clock as you go through the through the game but then it opens up the map slightly so you get an idea of what's there but then what it has it has these huge like sort of red like dots that appear on the map which are called like public order uh, problems and right. this is where you go there and there are like you know basically you know thieves bad guys or whatever that you then once you take care of them the whole area changes and becomes like uh you know peaceful again mm. and so once you've once you've uh, completed this public order like sort of section it then unlocks more of the map and then more people start returning actually to to that area but it's still not quite as sort of bustling as i would expect it to be you know considering what it is but i mean as i said i'm only about five to six hours into this um so far no maybe about seven hours i think and there's just so much to do and it, it this is where it feels like they've thrown this feels a lot more sort of gamey um than go to Tsushima does it like that felt like a very sort of cinematic kind of experience this feels much more like they've got this is an open world game and they're throwing everything in i mean it's got it's got crafting it's got relationship building <laughs> there's skill trees there's card games there's like pretty much anything you can think of with like an open world game and it's there you know like you know there's upgrades for all sorts of different systems and all that's fine like and i'm it does feel though that you can sort of you can choose to engage to a degree how much you want to engage with those things i mean i'm picking up loot like i've got so much stuff from just five to six hours play i don't know what to do with any of this stuff i'm just like choosing whatever weapon for the equipment that has the highest number which is probably the (laughs) wrong thing to do and then using that and it seems to be working okay Mm. um but it's it's such a mixed bag this is like there's so many things which are kind of interesting about it but then by turns there's other things where you just think this probably could have done with a bit longer and uh you know to sort of um to polish things up a bit but i am enjoying the, the it's the usual core loop that you get from an open world game of like you know unlocking a new area you know discovering everything a bit like we go to Tsushima. it's exactly the same thing that's what i enjoyed about that game you're clearing out bandit camps it's got all of that kind of stuff and um i'm kind of curious to see where the story's going because it has this i mean i know 
later on in the game, you have to start making choices about who you're going to support as to whether you're going to support like the like the Shogun or if you're going to you know, sort of revolt against that. And this is what I find interesting because it has that whole thing of the people that are against like the, the, the government are basically saying we don't want any foreigners in Japan. Like we want to ch- get rid of all of them. They've got to. They, they've all got to be gone. Whereas the government forces are like, we need to work with them. We need to modernize. You know this kind of thing. And it's you can see both perspectives in the sense of like one is like you know worried about losing their culture and about you know losing what they are, but the other is like, well, we have to. You know, we have to do this. And it's I'm very curious to see how that's going to play out in terms of the choices you make because I know at the start of the game they kind of give you both sides to sort of play with and to sort of it doesn't really affect too much like you know uh, which side you choose but later on i know that i'm going to have to choose a path so i'm curious to see how they're going to present that because it's very interesting especially because when you see what happens to japan after this period where you know it does modernize and it also becomes a colonial power in its own right mm. in the sense of it's like you know invades like mm. korea and then also china and it's uh, it's it's interesting this is an interesting period although it doesn't yeah because I wonder how much impact you can have on it because obviously, as you say, we, we know what happened in real life. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if you can essentially create, you know, like a little sort of alternate timeline within the game. I don't think so. Cause, no, because <laughs> because from what I've heard, it's like it it cuts off pretty like towards the end before right. you start getting to the the colonial stuff. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's that that's, that's a shame. Bits. Yeah, because that would be a really interesting. But yeah. yeah, but there's also it's interesting like walking around the city and there's all like you know there's like a French like area and there's like mm-hmm. a British area and all this. It's it's oh, yeah, it's interesting yeah. to see. But as I said, I'm very curious to see how they're going to politically how they're going to look at all of this because mm. it's um. Yeah, it's a it's a difficult period, I think. For yeah, I think so. But so yeah, other than the story, like you think this has got enough about it, where if you loved Ghost of Tsushima, there's it's different enough, or it's more the same with obviously slight differences. But how different really are these two games apart from the story? Um, I mean, I think in terms of combat, this feels a lot deeper and a lot. I'd say yeah, com- combat wise, it's a lot more interesting than Ghost of Tsushima was, which was quite. I wouldn't say it was basic, but it was it was just based on the the stance system, wasn't it? Basically, and then once you, I think, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima got interesting when you were like when you were clearing bases out and you were using all the abilities, right? And you're kind of switching in and out of stealth, so like mm-hmm. you might be able to do a bunch of people silently, then actually have a few actual fights with people, and then chuck a smoke bomb and then disappear and then do mm-hmm. some more stuff like that was really cool that that ability to go in and out of stealth rather than just oh we've been spotted now so now everyone in the camp knows where you are mm-hmm. um that stuff was really cool um but yeah when you were just like walking around and you'd get into duels with people and stuff i didn't enjoy that stuff so much mm-hmm. yeah I mean, with this, it's. I mean, also you have like speechcraft and everything as well, like where you can, mm-hmm. you can if you dedicate. Like it, also at the start, I mean, you can choose what kind of class of character you want to be, and mm-hmm. one of the options is you can you can choose to be somebody who uses speech more, you know, to try right. and get to try and resolve problems rather That's than cool. um, yeah, rather than just using violence. I mm-hmm. chose violence uh, because it's fun. Always. <laughs> uh, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I've not played any of their other games like that are of not of this style. But I mean, they what they had like Neo, right? It was was one of them. Neo, Neo, yeah. And Neo, Neo. um, and what was the other one? There was the I forgot. There's another Neo two. That there was that <laughs> one, yeah. No, was it? Is it like War Long? I think I can't remember what the other one was. Oh, uh, was that them? Yes, I think so. Okay. Was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, I've not played any of their others, so I'm not mm-hmm. sure, you know, how this compares with those. But um. Mm. I, I I mean it's getting sort of middling reviews this like it's getting mm. like sort of sevens and eights or whatever if they mm. are middling it's but I think it's it's worth a look I mean mm-hmm. it's just I mean when I initially played it I was really not sold on it but then mm. the more time I've spent the more I've thought yeah I've, I'm actually quite enjoying uh, the loop here it's mm. it's good yeah and as you say especially if it does actually have like if it does do justice to the sort of historical mm. relevance of the story so I think that's that's well worth because that that was my other main complaint with. Ghost of Tsushima, as I thought the story was absolute bobbins. Oh, it didn't um, engage with it at all, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> it's just yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's, that's that's cool, man. I'm I'm intrigued to see how you get on with it as time goes on. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, yeah, I'm hoping that the history side of things is going to be dealt with. Like, I mean, mm. one of the complaints I heard was people were like saying like, oh, yeah, there should be more sort of fantastical elements to this Ooh. because basically anybody you fight is a human. And it's like, but I'm <laughs> completely fine with that. It's like I quite <laughs> like this being quite grounded, you know, yeah. in in, yeah, in how yeah, things yeah. are because it's it's nice to play a game like that sometimes. Yeah. Cool. 
before we move on, Looper's fussing because he wants a piss. Can we have a five minute break? Sure, we can. Shoot. Sorry, maybe a sec. I just saw this thing on the stream. The uh, who was it? You that added this, Matt or Sean? Uh, Sean did that. Yeah. <laughs> Weeks since James Farley has been on holiday. That was there last week. <laughs> Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to reset that next week. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I added it. Yeah. So, so you're, you're going to keep keep playing Rise of the Ronin? Then is that am, now yeah. your main game? It is, but the trouble is, is because of going away, I'm not going to be able to. I mean, I've thought. Well, about just taking... don't turn your router off. Well, that's the thing. I've thought about taking the portal with me to you China, should. but then I'm just thinking, there's no way that that's going to be a usable experience. <laughs> uh, no, even through like VPNs and stuff. No, I, I, I might try. Maybe I'll take Portal anyway and just try it, you know, to see what it's like. But I can't see it working very well. Well, how long are you going away for? Uh, three weeks. Yeah. You can't take the PS5 with you? No, it's a bit, bit big. It's uh, is it? huge, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Oh. Yeah, why is the Rones are weird? I mean, I haven't played it. I've seen, like, you know, some people are like, oh, it's come out in the same week as Dragon's Dogma, so no chance. But mm. some people probably bounce off Dragon's Dogma pretty easily in playlists. Yeah, but no, it seems pretty good. Yeah, but you're playing this at the same time you're playing Infinite Wealth, or have you stopped playing that? I've stopped playing that for now because it, it's one of those things, isn't it? You can only really play a game like that, like Ooh. one of them at a time. It was yeah. ridiculous, which was a shame because I was really enjoying Infinite Wealth. I mean, I will go back to it, but yeah, just you're going to get Ronin done before and then go back to it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, after this my stream when I played Rise of Ronin, I was thinking I'm not even sure if I'm going to continue with this like forever, but then. Yeah, I started playing it over the weekend. and was like, actually, I'm really enjoying this. It's it's good. Mm. Nice. So we just got a bonus on? there. Yeah. Was that, I, was, I, was gonna, I, was, I was sort of rejoined. I was like, oh, is he, is he still going? Or are they just... <laughs> They're just off. I was off just chat. debating whether to take my portal to China with me or not to see if I could possibly stream. <laughs> but I think it's highly unlikely it'll work. <laughs> It's worth the risk. It's worth, yeah, just don't. As long as you make sure you don't try, you don't turn anything off before you leave the house. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. It yeah, should yeah, work so this unplug time. everything. Yeah, this time. <laughs> right. Uh, questions time then. Um, if you want to send us a question, go to tcgs.co forward slash dear tcgs. Maria Mendieta says, dear tcgs Kotor, Hell Divers Two has made David giddy. Rebirth has made Matt return to gaming. Sean is ecstatic with Bellatro, and the same game has made James renounce his faith as an ardent anti-deck builder. There is no better example that games can conjure an array of emotions than last week's episode. To discuss one emotion that often gets overlooked, what is a game or part of a game that has made you genuinely cringe? Recently, the lyrics to the opening theme music of Fire Emblem Engage has made me grit my teeth and wince at the same time. Keep up the amazing work. Sincerely, Maria. So that is that is a good point because that Fire Emblem Engage is awful. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's in the game in general, yeah, but didn't mind myself. Yeah. Um, the, what was? Uh, oh God, I forgot what it was called. The um, first-person shooter that was a bit sort of pro-Russian propaganda. Atomic possibly. Heart. Atomic yeah. Heart. That was it. Um, the bit with the the vending machine that's like a dominatrix. And and sort of saying all sexy things while trying to grab you with wires, and it's just not explained at all and doesn't make any sense, and it's mm. just completely out of place. And I, just, I was just like, why? Yeah, it does sound really cringe. Whatever was that? Atomic Heart. It was Atomic Heart. Yeah, it's quite early in the game, Matt. So if you okay, <laughs> that's. I mean, I'm not even bothered, but that's just uh, a yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might that sounds yeah. good. I mean, maybe interesting. Well, I mean, um, I guess it's so easy now just to skip to. David Cage games, but uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Any sex scene in a David Cage game, <laughs> or any scene in a David Cage game? <laughs> Not any scene. <laughs> the Ferris wheel, that was good, wasn't it? I mean, we all made fun of Naaman Jaden with his great glasses, but now look at Matt aiding his productivity with his three and a half grand Apple exactly, yeah. headset. It's you know, <laughs> great glasses. <laughs> David oh, Cage man. is a visionary, sadly. Yeah. Still chasing um, the high of that stream, honestly. <laughs> I'm never going to reach that again. That was so good. I just... <laughs> yeah, that game has so many moments. Like you playing the, the piano, the great glasses bit, the open the door bit. That My, my favourite bit of that game, actually, was that when they go to that person's um, apartment... And like they walk in there, and it's like I think this guy might be a bit religious, and there's like just crosses everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's just like, but it's stayed like with such like just complete sincerity. You're just yeah. like, it's, uh, oh, that's very good. I but no, I mean, of... I think on, like the idea of a game making me properly cringe in you know the way of you know maybe some cringe comedies or mm. I just don't like that feels as tricky to do often for me personally as like good comedy in games. Yeah. Like I don't think I've ever like cringed at a game in quite a way, same way I would cringe at movies or TVs or whatever, but TV shows. But yeah, I really can't think of of much else. It's um, it's not really a thing in games, is it? It's usually I'd say like it's it's usually more like you personally cringing at the subject matter rather than mm. like a character being in a scenario. Yeah. Maybe not come are... with uh, better quality graphics and animation and so on and so forth. Maybe make things more believable. There are so many things in like for, like in Infinite Wealth that could be like in that mm. direction, but it mm. just always goes on the right line of like being funny rather than slight making you I think yeah I think like Yakuza in general is like a pretty good example of yeah how to avoid that right like in the the, Mm -hmm. yeah there are so many things that would be I mean okay there's definitely bits in Yakuza games that you would be embarrassed to be seen playing but you you speak for yourself Sean there's But just there, there is a, a certain amount of, of heart in it, right? And yeah. so it sort of, of doesn't come across as cynical as perhaps it could. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. All right. Uh, ben from Oregon says, Evening, fellas. I would love to hear Dr. F- oh, no, yeah, this, this isn't even about video games, but it's something I've been meaning to ask you, James. So here it is. I would love to hear Dr. Farley's thoughts or opinions on all things the three-body problem. I feel he'd have a unique perspective knowing his specialty in academics and family history. I assume he's read the book, but who knows? Has he seen the Tencent-produced Chinese TV show, or has he seen any of the Netflix version? Can't wait for Wednesday. Your show is the best gaming content of the week. IMO. Love you all. Yeah, I'll start watching this. Have you? On Netflix, yeah. Cool. Because this is... Go on, sorry. This is what's weird because I I haven't read the book and okay. but I did actually yesterday. Had you heard started, of it before now? Yeah, yeah, yeah I heard okay, of it. Cool. Yeah, and I yesterday I actually started watching the Netflix version okay. and I watched the opening. I watched the opening of that and mm. I mean I was fascinated like just straight mm. from the opening mostly because I know I I know of the ten cent version which is like thirty episodes long mm. which is and there's been like a whole thing because obviously the Netflix version is not available like legally in China right, and. Yeah. One of the things that I found really interesting was that the opening to 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 this version on Netflix has this like cultural revolution scene, which is mm. pretty brutal, like mm-hmm. I would say. And um, yeah, I mean, like the imagery and everything is all most of the stuff that I studied for work, you know, for mm. quite a long time, and it's it's absolutely fascinating. And I just thought, how is that going to come across? Because that that aspect of history is not really spoken about or sort of covered. And mm. One of the things that I found when I was just just reading up because I was just curious is that like the, the original book has that stuff sort of in the middle. They they move it to sort of the guy moves it to the, like the middle of the of the book um, rather than at the rather than right at the start. Mm. And that was to get it through government censors because right. they they were not happy about this being like sort of front loaded. Mm. But they do this for the Netflix for Netflix version where they move it to the front, which is actually where the author wanted it to be uh, in the beginning as right. a, as a, like you know as it were in the beginning. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, and uh, but I mean, I'm I'm intending to watch it. Um, it looks interesting. I mean, a lot of my friends in like in China are huge fans. Like they mm-hmm. they really like really really dig it. But um, I don't at the moment. I don't really know enough about it without having uh having watched it myself. Yeah, I know it's a trilogy of books, and like I you know heard like months ago about this, and you know I, I thought this sounds fantastic, and I bought a little bit. I bought the audio, but they bought the book on order um, on on kindle but just didn't read it for reasons um but um yeah i've watched the first three episodes and uh, it's also there's also like a really big vr component to this mm-hmm. <laughs> um which is also interesting you know mm-hmm. i i i only really knew of like oh I, yeah i knew something about aliens or space and i had before this show came out i actually read into what the free body problem actually is it's an actual kind of issue where no one can solve you know this kind of yeah, this it's like a physics problem. Yeah, it's right? a physics thing yeah. about if like three planets are near each other, three huge bodies are three you know spatial planets, spatial bodies are near each other. They can't predict where things will um, mm. go around with like orbits. With like with two planets, you mm. can predict how something nearby would um, uh, switch between or move around them two things because of the way orbit works. But if a third one appears, then it all goes out the window, and it's it's impossible to predict so i looked into that and then i um and, uh, and but i'm very excited about this yeah it's a 
it's an interesting show. I mean, like it doesn't doesn't quite have like the HBO level of quality. Mm. There's something. I mean, it clear a lot of money's gone into this, but there's just something about it. It's just not quite on the same level as like a as the very best like TV. Mm. Also, this is done by it's the showrunners of Game of Thrones, and it's yeah. you know maybe not a surprise, but there are fuckloads of Game of Thrones actors in this. Also, <laughs> shitloads of British comic actors like mm. Kevin Eldon's in this, <laughs> like Reece Re- Re- Shearsmith and the other dude from League oh, of wow. Gentlemen's in this, mm-hmm. oh, like. Cool. It, I mean, it, it's set in Britain, uh, parts mm. of it are. So, um, mm. yeah, it's like, yeah, I just thought I thought that was interesting. I'm going to keep watching it, and uh, mm. you know, the idea is really interesting. But, mm. yeah, uh, it, it's, yeah, um, yeah, I'm going to keep keep watching it. Are you going to watch? Yeah, Kevin Eldon's in it. Yeah, Phil Wall. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Kevin Eldon. Actor, yeah, the actor Kevin Eldon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the actor, yeah. Um, no, I, I'm interested, but I haven't got Netflix at the moment because ah. I was just going through a, a phase of there's nothing really on there that I wanted, and it's like 18 quid a month now, whatever well, it is. Well, they knew, they knew. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe this will pull me oh. back in. Do you but, know, I did something stupid the other day. Yeah. I mean, I, well, not stupid, it's just it's really annoying. I forgot, you know how Disney Plus, they increased all the subscription prices like oh, ridiculously yeah. this got like, me recently. Too. And did you get caught as well, Matt, with it? Yeah, I forgot. I got so confi- did I... Yeah. Well, I'll let you finish yours first. <laughs> yeah, I forgot because I was going to change it like to a lower tier because mm. I was like, we're still going to keep it because we're still watching quite a lot of stuff on there. Mm. Like the kids watch stuff on there all the time. And, mm. you know, as, as I said, I've been watching Buffy and Angel with, with, with Rachel and we just finished Buffy. So we're watching Angel at the moment. And But then, yeah, I got, got the notification on my phone yeah, one hundred and nine uh, pounds Ooh. has just been taken from your from your account, and I was like, Blimey. "What?" Are this? And then <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd forgotten that they'd increased it to, yeah, to, to that level. And uh, yeah, I was looking at my here yeah, subscription. So uh, if you pre-ordered it before it came out, I think the first thing was like fifty quid for the yeah. year. Yeah, obviously it was yeah. never going to be that. And it's still, yeah. you know, considering Netflix is eighteen quid a month, this is still way better value, and even one hundred nine still better. Than mm. Netflix's prices, but mm, yeah. yeah, I was like 109 quid. I got confused because I mean, I think we've all been in the same situation where if you get a new phone, oh, three months Disney Plus, you buy that three months of Disney Plus, and all those things you've I've been able to like with O2, like add them onto my existing Disney Plus subscription, it mm-hmm. pauses your current subscription, mm. and then it goes on the free one till the free one expires, then goes back to the paid one. And I had like three or four of these, and I was like, I don't know where I am, I don't know what day it is, <laughs> mm. and then so just so happened that. Uh, I guess those all run out, and then suddenly it's like, bang, here's the money. So <laughs> You want to get you yourself know. a Samsung phone, mate? You've got a year of Disney Plus for that. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, um, but again, you know, I had I, to like, when I got the phone, said. I was like, right, this is the date my current Disney Plus sub runs out, so I'm going to cancel it now, put a marker in my calendar to remind me to then get the code to get the free, because I just knew I would just forget and then just let it run. Um, so, see yeah. that's that's what I sh- see. I should have done that because I was gonna. I mean, I was gonna downgrade it to like I think it was like seventy quid or something like that, or just over mm. seventy quid for like the one I was. What does downgrading it do? Uh, you. I think you lose like the ability to like download stuff or something. I can't remember. Oh, what right. it is, well, I never like, download never stuff. Do anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not to go on yet another tangent, but speaking of Disney Plus, are either of you watching Shogun? No. no, but I've heard lots of people say it's, it's really excellent. It's so good. It's incredible. I won't go on about it because it's meant to be a video games podcast, but it's, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Yeah, the, um, the last thing I watched Disney Plus, uh, me and Eddie watched the Eras, Ty Swift Eras tour, and it was amazing. Oh, yeah. It yeah, was really incredible. As well. I didn't, but yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> I want to watch Folklore next. Um, anyway, but uh, yeah, um, what was the question? Free <laughs> uh, body problem. Remember. Yeah, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep watching it, um, and it's, it's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I've well, more to say after I've seen it, but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Um, right, this next one comes from Gasman which is an incredible insight into the, the sort of clout that people think we have. Uh, it says, Dear TCGS, I uh, hope you're all feeling wonderful this fair spring. For suggestions on possible guests, apart from Dr. James Farley, I would like to submit a couple of suggestions. Frankie Boyle has stated multiple times that he at least plays FIFA, or whatever it's called now. He's bound to have some interesting views on the philosophy and business ethics of games, and he's been brilliant on a guest on other podcasts, Hip Hop Saved My Life, Taskmaster Podcast, and recently on Off Menu. Uh, Munya Chihuahua recently made uh, posts and comments on the beauty of Sekiro, I believe it was. And my logic is that Sekiro is hardly a my first gaming experience type of game, so would wager that he has a longer passion for games. Um, additionally, am I correct in remembering that TCGS's anniversary is coming up soon? Will you be doing any stream or celebration in connection with this? I know James is travelling, so will that also fit in with his tradition of moving birthdays to fit his schedule? All the best, Gasman. Uh, gas Bamboo-based boxers. Good move. Um... 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think we could get either of those guests on. Uh, no, honest. they're both incredibly successful. <laughs> that that is not you're, going you're, to happen. But then you just think, well, what's the harm in asking? Yeah, well, but, I mean, <laughs> Munya's too busy making songs about 15 seconds after news breaks. So <laughs> I don't think he'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do a three-hour podcast on the, on the yeah. On a Why Monday. Not? Why not? Uh, Frankie bought, I mean, it's, oh, wouldn't he just take the piss out of us? I don't, I mean, That's good, though. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, still, yeah, still be, yeah, still be good, good content. Uh, no, I think he's a perfectly nice fella, isn't he? Like, I think it's like seeing him on Taskmaster. I'd, I'd sort of gone back and forth on Frankie Boyle over the years, and then seeing him on Taskmaster, it's like, oh, yeah, he's a nice old man now, isn't he? <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, maybe we can try. I don't see it happening, but um, yeah, it doesn't hurt to try. It doesn't hurt to try, as, as Sean says. And yeah, the anniversary. Yeah, so our eighth birthday is on the sixth of April. Which is um, mm-hmm. coming up? It's not far. Is it like two Soon, two weeks or so? James, James is away. away. Yeah. Um, yeah. But when it, well, when are you back? Uh, let me have a look. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking like if it, if it's just a matter of delaying it by a couple of days so that we can do a no, birthday it's, it's stream with all four of us. More than a couple of days. Uh, so the the next show will be will be the 22nd of April. <laughs> ah, for f- <laughs> ah. <laughs> never mind. Um, <laughs> Well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But um, well, yeah, well, if it's just us three, we'll do something. If we delay it, I mean, gee, what does it really matter? <laughs> I mean, I'll be back for the fucking for a, point. I'll you were back, back for the tenth. No, for episode four hundred, it'll be. I'm definitely back during when that's happening because that's in okay. like six episodes time, so we're good. Yeah, yeah. that's more important if anything. You know. Cool. Yeah, it probably is actually. <laughs> Um, uh, well, we might do something. We'll see. We'll see what happens yeah. in terms of yeah, yeah, yeah. diaries and that. You know what I mean? Um, would it be like, like, would it be nice to do like an episode like where we just do questions or something? Or would that be? I don't know. That'd be rubbish. What well, I, no. I, I don't like it. It's a regular pod for like we record on Monday and out on Wednesday, but it's just questions. Yeah. No. No. Okay. No. That's <laughs> we're gonna. We can, that could be a bonus, sure, but we can't. That can't take the place of a regular pod. Yeah, I suppose. People not. Are like you've really mugged me off. I look forward <laughs> to the show. You've mugged me off for questions about like, what's look, your James favorite isn't waffle. James is here. No one else wants to do the news, so we just <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to play any games either. So it's fine. Okay, last question uh, comes from Greg. Uh, when it was getting savaged by the critics, I noticed that the new Alone in the Dark was an embracer group game. Here's a question: Given just how many studios they bought, can you name a single hit game they've published through one of their subsidiaries since forming Embracer Group in 2019? No. This will be a great in the cuisine question. <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, to be clear, Alone in the Dark didn't get savage, right? It's like a six out of ten, which is a shame considering you know the talent that's in it. Um, you know, I, I think people had high hopes, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it was like total shit or anything. But yeah, um, the last did uh, they do oh, Saints Row? They did Saints Row, but then that was a flop, right? That's but yeah, it, even yeah. though it's meant to be all right, like it's meant to be good. Um, oh, Louis P in the chat says, "When was the last? When was the last Borderlands?" So I guess Tiny Tina's. What was it? Tiny Tina's something or something, other. something, yeah. something. A land. Wonderland. Was it? Was it Wonderland? I think it was. Wonderland, um, yeah. That again. I don't think that was a massive hit though. I think a hit it's though. I mean, right. it's hard enough to name a game they've done, let alone a hit game. Yeah. Did they do? Did they do the Hobbit? A- again. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, oh, you mean uh, Gollum? You mean? Oh, Gollum! Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. that them? Yeah. Schmiegel. Oh I think so, yeah. God. Um, yeah, it's not been a good couple of years. Oh, right, right, Louis said that that's Nacon or Nacon. Was it? Uh, okay. okay. That's Nacon, mate. Uh, so, Greg, the answer is no. You can't think of any. Yeah. So that's that's, yeah, that's why they're all trying to get out in it. Yeah, makes there. sense. But it is kind Imagine of imagine they tried to acquire us, and then they <laughs> shut us down. How much money would we get? Yeah, do we get the get point? money and we don't have to do this anymore? That's the dream, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we would have had to do it for two years to get the golden handshake. We just, we'd just start another um, start another podcast. It'd be fine. Yeah, and it'd be called um, uh, GTCS or something. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have like David say, "Look, we we just we can buy ourselves out. We'll buy yeah, ourselves yeah, exactly. out. Yeah, five hundred yeah. million, yeah. and we'll go independent. <laughs> <laughs> but we have entered an agreement with Microsoft." As well. (laughs) (laughs) That is it for questions. Matt, would you like to do the socials? Yes. This Wednesday, if you're a Patreon supporter at the £8.50 and above tier, we are doing our Patreon video stream for March 2024 and this month. 
we're reading Sonic versus Zonic. It's a so choose your own adventure book. Playing Sonic versus Sonic is going to be an interactive experience. It's going to be like playing one of the games on the Mega Drive. Yes, uh, without the music. Um, <laughs> So we'll be doing that. And if that ends early, maybe we'll find something else to play as well because uh, that might just be 20 minutes. That's Wednesday. Um, I'll endeavour to get a post out tomorrow, Tuesday, if you're listening to this um, now. <laughs> or, yeah, doesn't matter. A post will be out this week before Wednesday. <laughs> I, got lost my, I lost my day or then. It doesn't matter. A post will be on Patreon if you're the, if you're the relevant here to find out how to watch it live. Um, Thursday. Um, Can I can I change this? Re- right, Sean, can I stream yeah. on Thursday, please? Uh, please do. I don't have any plans to stream this week. so. Okay, so I will do Dark Souls 3 on Thursday. Uh, Brilliant. That is at 9 p.m. on twitch.tv slash TCGS. Go search for TCGS in the app and you can find us, find the channel, follow us if you want. If you've got Amazon Prime, <laughs> you've got Twitch Prime Gaming. <laughs> Just connect your me? Amazon account <laughs> with a Twitch account. And they give you one free sub you cannot keep. You can't take it with you. You have to give it away. You have to give it away. Otherwise, you'll lose it. And it's free real estate you're giving away, basically. It's money so go to our channel. Money out of your pockets. Give us it's your free sub because we really genuinely hugely appreciate it. It you know, puts make some money in our pocket and makes James feel happy and all of us are happy. So connect your accounts. And yeah, everyone's got a Twitch account. Everyone's got Amazon Prime. Connect your accounts. Give us your free sub. Lovely old job. Um, if you miss them live as well, just search the TCS on YouTube and there'll be a VOD uh, probably a day or two or three, depending on how busy I am after the stream. The um, the uh, the patrons, patreon.com, I'll just mention that, patreon.com slash TCGS supports what we're doing over there and all that kind of stuff. And the website is tcgs.co for our amazing Discord community, the store to buy the James T-shirt, socials, podcasts, other stuff like that. <laughs> we, don't, we haven't talked about the T-shirt, have we? Thank you so much to everyone who's bought one. Um, it was a very oh, silly yes. joke that's run out, you know, got completely out of hand, but it's been so funny seeing people like posting pictures of them wearing one and stuff. I'm sure James yeah. is also equally amused. James is amused. Everyone loves it. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll see what other merch we can, other merch we can do, which isn't going to take the absolute piss, yeah. um, <laughs> cost wise. And again, we don't say we we can change the prices, but like for that mug, we couldn't change the price, and uh, yeah, it was, it was low as because it so we'll see if there's anything that's not going to you know take the piss too much. Cool. That's it. James, you're off for a bit now. Yeah. Is that right? That's Is there cool. anything you want to say to the listeners? Um, not really. Are you going to leave him with no, anything? Any right, advice? Fine. That's no. how much he cares about you, everyone at home. So you're off now for three <laughs> weeks, James, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not going to remember what you, what you look like. That's all right. You can have a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, we have all got the t-shirts. Yeah. Like a point. I'll just look yeah. down. So you'll be upside down, so it won't be the same. Yeah. We'll have to see if we can get some guests on. Yes, we will. We haven't talked about that, have we? It's probably well. Let's get Frankie Boyle on the phone. Frankie Boyle, Munya, yeah. and yeah. then uh, <laughs> we'll do a free person show. It's fine. Yeah, and then, then one three manner and a barma. A few quid. We'll end with a barma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get a barma on. Yeah, yeah. be up for it. Uh, right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Um, see you next week. Thanks for letting us be natural. Hey, ta-ra. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>